Yes. Opening prayer, please. It's just Linda. It's Linda. Yeah. Hi, I'm just Linda. <laughs> it's good to see you all here. Um, so let's just open with prayer. So Father God, we are so happy to be here. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are strong and powerful in this place. We thank you, Jesus, that your blood reigns, that your name reigns, that there is nothing that can come against what God wants to do here tonight. We thank you for our speaker. We thank you for John Ramirez, who came a long ways to get here and had to hang out in an airport. So we thank you for that. We thank you for each person who has come, God. And I know you have a reason for them being here. So we just open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts for what God has here tonight. And we come expectantly because we have a God who meets and exceeds expectations. In Jesus' name, thank you. Yeah, so we're super excited to have evangelist John Ramirez in the house. So everybody give him a round of applause. Um, awesome. And we have a couple videos that we're going to go ahead and watch. And then as we go into worship, please feel free to just worship um, the king. You don't have to sit in your chair. You can stand up, raise your hands, flag if you want. So let's worship. Welcome, everybody. I went to hell as a devil worshiper and came back as a Christian. God gave me the gift to expose the enemy to the fullest. I mean, there was no reason for me in the devil's camp for 25 years of my life and know all the patterns and cycles and give me the wisdom and knowledge to expose the enemy to the church today so you can fight the good fight of faith. God put in my heart to do this amazing spiritual warfare eight weeks training with a workbook. The course is going to train you, it's going to equip you, and teach you all the secrets of how the devil operates against the believer. You can be the arrow in God's quiver, because when the fight starts, he can pull you out, he can launch you into the devil's camp to make havoc and destroy the works of darkness and set the captives free. Right now, the times we're in, the devil, is he has brought up his arsenal against the church, against the believer. But we need to know one thing, that the abilities of the enemy doesn't take away from the authority that God has given us. You want to be Christian with God's best, filled with the, not only with the Holy Spirit, but filled with the arsenals of heaven. The mind of spiritual warfare, the mind of the good soldier, the one that had been enlisted in the army of God. That's what I'm teaching you on spiritual warfare. I'm teaching you the training. I'm teaching you what you need to know in your life to get you to the finish line. We need to let the devil know that we ain't playing. If you want to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and really be armed and dangerous, man, you need to take this course. You need to be part of something that's going to teach you how to dismantle, disarm every demonic attack over your life. It's going to set you free, and it's going to equip you, and it's going to get you to the place that God wants you to be. You have a purpose and a destiny. Put it in your arsenal. Put it in your life. Put it in your spirit, and be what God called you to be. Special up. It's time to fight. It's time to win. God's counting on us to bring the fight to the enemy. All right, let's stand up on our feet and we're going to worship tonight. I just encourage you tonight that whatever you need tonight, it's in the presence of God. So God, we just worship you, God. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and have your way. God, we just pray, Holy Spirit, come and fill this house, God. Sing loud. 
up to it, praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Our Father, all of heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Let this place hear up to it, praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Sing spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Heaven come down Oh, let it come tonight We are hungry for more of you, God King Jesus You're the name we're lifting high Your glory Shaking up the earth and skies Revival We want to see your kingdom here We want to see your kingdom here King Jesus You're the name we're lifting high Your glory Shaking up the earth and skies see your kingdom here we want to see your kingdom here so spirit break out oh let it break our walls break our walls down oh spirit break out
spirit break out. Let heaven come. Let heaven come down. Oh, let heaven come. We want more than a touch from you, Jesus, tonight. We want more than just a touch from you, Jesus. song to the Lord tonight. Come on, stir up heaven in this place tonight. Stir up the presence of God in this place tonight. Your name is power, your name is healing, your 
Jesus over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Come on, sing it out with everything you have tonight Declare it out Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over circumstances that might seem impossible because his presence is here tonight let's begin to lift up those impossible situations because Jesus has overcome it all Breathe. 
make every stronghold shine through the shadows, burn like fire. Oh, there's freedom in the name of Jesus. There is freedom. 
came in with tonight There is freedom There is freedom You were meant to carry those burdens You were meant to carry that anxiety You were meant to carry that depression Cause there is freedom in this place tonight there is freedom Time to lay those burdens down It's time to lay those burdens down Cause you were never meant to carry that You were made to carry His glory You were made to carry His glory Carry that depression. You were meant to carry that anger. It's time to lay it all down, cause there is freedom. Freedom to break the chains that binds.
Cause every other throne is under your throne Every other name is under your name And every other spirit is under your spirit You will high and lift it up takes place in our body, in our minds. He has overcome it all, and he sits on the throne tonight. Worship, amazing. Amen. I tell you, there's some people that can 
There's some people that can play the radio and some people can worship, amen. And we got worship today in the name of Jesus, amen. Come on, people. I, I, I believe it all my heart, amen. Blessings to all. Are we here? Amen. God is good. Come on now. It just, thank you so much for having me, having courage to invite me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm still waiting for Osteen. Hopefully he'll invite me. I mean, he invited Kanye West, right? <laughs> Maybe he'll say, John, you want to come by? And go to Starbucks? <laughs> Amen. You with me? Amen. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I just want to share, before I get into the message tonight, I just want to share a moment, you know, just, just share a moment. Just, you know, sometimes you have to stop, see lot. The Bible says see lot. Stop and meditate and reflect on what God has done for you. Amen. And, and I, hear, I hear people getting delivered from Satanism, and, and that's great. I, re, I rejoice over the people that are getting delivered and coming into the kingdom. But I, 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 I see people come into the kingdom and say, I remember I, I was in a Patricia King uh, thing I went to see, and uh, I did a show with her. I did two shows with Patricia King, a wonderful lady. And, uh, and she has this guy, he came to one of the meetings I was in, and he was like, you know, Luciferian and all that stuff. And I was like, wow, you know, he got delivered. He was like, you know, high priest, Luciferian church, and I was all excited. So I went over to him, and I said, hey, so, you know, what's going on, you know, and that's kind of uh, the darkness and demonic satanic side of the kingdom. What's going on? And all that? I said, what do you do? I mean, what you did over there? You know, I mean, did you, did you do damage? What you do? What kind of contracts and all that? Did you kill anybody? Did you do witchcraft? Did you kill, you know, you kill animals? You did anything? You, did you drink animals? Did you drink human blood? I mean, what, you, you know, what was the story? He said, we just killed a squirrel. I'm like, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I'm like, that's it? Satan just had you kill a squirrel? And you call that Luciferian? I'm like, for real? You disappoint me, man. And I'm leaning somewhere with this because, you see, I, 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 and, and I think I'm the least of the least of the people that qualify to even get up and say something because of, of because of where I came from, what God had done in my life, and, and how God uh, revealed himself to me, right? Because people say, I found Jesus. I'm like, no, not really. Jesus found you. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way, you know. You couldn't find Jesus if he was standing in front of you. Amen? Because you see, the eyes have to, the spiritual eyes have to be open. Your heart has to be open to see him. Amen. And only, only the Holy Spirit can open up your eyes. Because today we sit here, right, and we look at the world, and the world is so lost, right? We look at the world, there isn't so much darkness, but you can see. And you can see the demonic. You can see the demonic is, is just ramping in the world today more than ever in this lifetime. Amen. I mean, you see the despicable, unrighteous. I mean, we were just driving here, and we were talking about the show, Good Morning America. They had this little 10-year-old, Trinvesti, dressed up. They gave him the platform, and he was dancing all over the place. And this is Good Morning America. I mean, it's supposed to be like a reputable show, you know, like for, you know, a uh, show that is supposed to have some, some kind of credentials of, of morality. And even that is twisted. You see, the, 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 it, it just, it just, it's so ramping. The devil is so ramping today that it, it, just, it just, you can't even keep track of what the, what, what the devil got next. You know, the infiltration to television, the infiltration to movies, you know, to books, media, uh, uh, social media. I mean, the devil is out and about doing damage. You, you with me? And I, and, I, and I say to myself, you know, I, 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 I just, I'm shocked. Like, I'm shocked in, in, in the sense of how God saved me. How God saved me. I mean, I was looking for Jesus. I ain't want Jesus. I wasn't looking for no church. I had a church. I, had, I, w I went to demon church. I had a PhD in witchcraft. I, had, I was in the highest of 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 the highest key in the satanic kingdom. I was not that little guy painting his nose black and, and black little t-shirt. That, that's just a reject. 
and, 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 and this other devil worship is coming into the kingdom, and I celebrate them. But I was beyond that. I was, I mean, I was way beyond that. And, and, and I, I, I guarantee you, and, and, and did you go around and you look and you see, and, and I'm trying to lead you somewhere that I even, I, even, I even bear the marks of the devil on my flesh. I can point them out to you. I can bring my shirt down. You see the marks that were carved into my flesh the night I sold my soul. And when you sell your soul to the devil, you sell your allegiance, your time, and your devotion. That's, that's what selling the soul is. You can't sell your actual soul. You can't sell that. You can't sell that because God owns the title of that car. God owns the title. God has a motor vehicle in heaven. He has, God has a motor vehicle in heaven. He has all the titles of all the souls. I can prove it to you. It's biblical. Absence from the body, presence in the Lord. Amen. The point of a man die is the judgment. God owns the title. You can sell your time, your legion, your devotion, Jennifer Lopez, Beyonce, whatever you call yourself. Cardi, Cardi B, now Cardi B is crying, now she wants someone to go rescue her. Because the devil is tormenting her to the point she can't handle it because the devil wants a new contract. You see? So, so we, we, I, I want to share this to you tonight because, see, spiritual warfare comes in different components, different facets of spiritual warfare. We think spiritual warfare is about people manifesting. It's beyond that. Because today, today, the devil has accomplished a lot of damage in the church today. And not because God is weak. God is, God is far from weak. The church is. The church is weak. God is not weak. Believe me. God don't sleep. He's not weak. And God doesn't have a birth certificate. You, you, you with me so far? God doesn't have a birth certificate. God is not even weak. God sits on the circle of the earth. Nothing happened. Nothing moved. Nothing breathed without his permission. It is amazing that even even uh, uh, some time ago I was with Kevin and Kevin sh- Kevin said I said his testimony. He said that he went he, he died he went to heaven and he and he sat with God he sat with Jesus and he and and, and, and on Jesus' desk there was a little globe sitting there and, and it was a little globe sitting there and, 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 and Kevin was looking at it and Jesus caught him looking at it and he asked Jesus as he got caught he got busted looking at it he asked Jesus one question he said Jesus is that the is that the globe and Jesus said no. That's not the globe. It was this small on the desk. He said, that's not the globe. He said, what is it? He said, that's the universe. The whole entire universe sitting on his desk. I mean, that's, like, that's a shouting moment right there. That's like, oh, that's like an off the hook. I mean, the whole entire universe sitting on his desk like he went to Toys R Us and bought it. I mean, it, 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 it just, just, get, just get a glimpse. This is just a glimpse of who we serve. And he said, Kevin said that Jesus walked around heaven. And, and one thing I love about my, the ministry God put me in, because I don't own it. I don't own nothing. He valued people. He said he walked around heaven. And he started embracing people, embracing people because he valued people. And today, ministers love the crowd, but they hate the people. I've been in a lot of green rooms. Trust me. I've been in some green rooms. And I'm, I, if I had punched a guy in the face five times in my mind, I repented. And if I tell you the name of the person, you're like, oh, I know who he is. How, 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 is it that, how is it that God took you out the projects? You drank pr- project water? You, you ate a lot of government cheese? And now you want a five-star restaurant? You want a five-star hotel? You want a Yukon with tinted windows to come pick you up? But you, you, had, a, you, had, you, you, you had a Hyundai before you met Jesus. <laughs> and the rims were more expensive than the car. <laughs> and the boombox stereo system, you can hear for three blocks away, it costs more than your car. 
and now God made you a preacher, and now you won a Yukon with tinted windows, and you want a five-star restaurant, and you want a five-star hotel, and you want the toothpaste, and you want your Fiji water to be 72 degree temperature, but you grew up on project water. See, you see, when I'm, when I'm, I, I, I've, this is what I've learned. I learned that God has a bum underneath a bridge somewhere. That if you get uppity, God can replace you. And, 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 and walking with Christ, it's it, it just been an amazing journey. And I, I want to show you something before I get into the message. It's been an emergency. Um, I don't know how people we do church anymore. Like when I went to Demon Church, I went from 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Wow. We sat down for 15 minutes to open up the Demon Church to the demonic. And then we put the chairs away and we stood, we stood up all night on our feet. And people like, you know, if you don't have a comfortable chair, they don't come. It's a price you pay. It, 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 what are you willing to pay to sacrifice something to get God's attention? So when I so now, so when I go to when I go to when I go to church and I do when I am on the altar and people say, "Man, I can't believe you pray for three hours, four hours with people one on one. Why? Why would you do something that's stupid?" I said, "Because too much is given, too much is required." You see, when, when God has given you much, then He requires much from you. That's why when, when, I, when, when people did a Ponzi scheme on me, the, the church did a Ponzi scheme on me, and they stole my money, and I went to bankruptcy court when I was preaching in the Bahamas. I was, I, was, I was broke. I didn't have nothing. I was completely destroyed, right? And then my brother called me up, and my brother, my brother did like 15 years in jail. My brother said, you want me to go get them guys for you? They were pastors, by the way. <laughs> they were pastors that did this Ponzi scheme, and they were, they were ministers. That I knew I ate with them, they slept in my house, we chilled with them and everything. They did all this to me. And then my, 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 my brother said, I got, I got my people that will go get them. And then we'll pull them out the church and beat them in the front and the sidewalk. And we'll put them on the phone. You can hear them scream. <laughs> and I was looking for scripture. <laughs> The only scripture I, I was able to find is vengeance is the Lord, and God is using my brother as the rod. <laughs> you know, because we try, we try, see, we, we try to take scripture and bend it to fit us. And then I heard the voice of the Lord said to me, if I've forgiven you much, why can't you forgive them? Amen. And I told my brother, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. See, because so much is given, too much is required. Understand? Salvation costs. You got it for free, but it costs, son of God, cost them something to come get you from the foster world system to come buy you, come purchase you. To come purchase you. So that's why I'm saying, why would you play? This, I'm going somewhere, to, and, and I'll get to the message in about two minutes. Why would you play with your salvation? What would you let someone play with your salvation? Spiritual warfare is protecting your salvation. You say, the Bible says it. Protect your salvation. The Bible says we're trembling in fear. The fear of God. We have lost the fear of God in the church today. Now the church is Club Julio. We got crystal balls. We got smoke coming out the stage. We got entertainment, but no presence of God anymore. We have lost the presence of God in the house. We got gifts, but no presence of God. We had lost the presence of God. We don't know. We can't discern the presence of God anymore. I can walk into a church and I know who the devil is, who the witch is. I know who the Jezebel is. Because there's one thing that I pray for and I ask God never, never, ever, ever let it decrease in my life. Let it increase. It's discernment. Because witches come dressed like Christians. And the only way I know they're witches by the footprint because they're wolves inside of sheep clothing. Oh, I'm going somewhere with this. So, so the Bible said, protect your salvation with trembling, fear and trembling. Protect something that costs Christ. It was priceless and he gave it to you. And spiritual warfare is protecting what God has given you. What God has, what God has deposited in you. Listen, no one breaks into an empty house. I grew up in a ghetto. 
I don't break into Julio's house. What he got, black and white TV? <laughs> break into his house? What? No one breaks in to, uh, uh, no one breaks into somewhere that you can't get nothing. God deposit treasure in you, yeah. in earthly vessels. But you have let the devil contaminate it by compromising. It, 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 it is, it, 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 spiritual warfare has two components. Spiritual warfare has two components. That's why it's amazing that the day I, the day I did the, I did the demonic ceremony, it was 17 people that, that was handpicked by the devil. And the demonic ceremony was so, it was so, it was so diabolical that people passed out because they, they, the blood, they, 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 when they got cut, they were cut open and people were passing out because there was, a, there was an extreme amount of blood being spilled out of people's body because the devil wanted the blood. And people were passing out and fainting. And I was the only one out of 17 people that stood standing that was able to resist the ceremony that night and the devil came and signed the contract. So when you tell me, I'm going to sit in this, I, I light up black candles, I get out of here with that stuff. That stuff don't work. So when witches and warlocks come to my meeting to dress like Christian, that stuff don't work. Yeah. The, it, it was a meeting one time, and the devil said, and, and I was left out of the meeting on purpose because of jealousy, and the devil told the people, I can kill you, I can kill you, I can kill you. The devil came down that day, he said, I can kill about five, six of you. But John remembers, I love. I need him. John, and now think about it. The devil can't love you because you made an image of God. But he said to the people, I can destroy half of you to keep John Ramirez. Because I was sold out to, to a system, to a demonic, demonic hierarchy of the highest levels of witchcraft, of the satanic world. It's called the shadows of the dark side. The church is not even ready for that. For that kind of spiritual warfare. So I, 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 want, I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you today about spiritual warfare. I want to talk to you today about spiritual warfare. It, it's, if, if, if God was, if Jesus walked to walk in here today right now, and he would say, well, he's, in the last supper, Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me. And if you were to walk in here right now and say, one of you is ain't making heaven, what would you say? Have you done inventory of what God deposited in you that is increasing? I mean, the parable speaks for itself. The one with the one talent got thrown into outer darkness. Think about it. Outer darkness thrown into outer darkness. Because he didn't produce nothing. What would Jesus curse the fig tree? Because it had an appearance that it had something, had nothing when he went up close and inspected. It, 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 it is a place that God saying, if you don't have something to bring home to heaven with me, you're not making heaven. You're not making heaven. How are you going to go home? How are you going to go back home to heaven with an incomplete? Th think about it. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I go get the crown that he worked so hard for. My life is like, I'll tell you tomorrow, my life is like the life of Paul. Paul got recruited from the third heaven. He heard the voice of Jesus. I got recruited from the second heaven when the seven necklace of seven powers, the necklace of dark side came down from the, from the second heaven and fell to my feet. So my life is very parallel to the life of Paul. So, 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 so. That's why, when, man, that's why I'm so in love with Jesus. When Jesus came to get me, I thought he made a mistake. I thought I was the only one on, that, on my 12th floor. I thought I was the only one home. I said, he must have made a mistake. I'm the only one home. Maybe he was looking for the neighbor. <laughs> I couldn't believe he, he would come to get me. I was like, you, should, you made a mistake. You sure you want me? You sure you want me? When I had nine cemeteries in my house, I had human bones in my house. I had coffins in my house to do witchcraft on people. I had coconut that represents your mind, your head, your personality, your character. I know how to steal your personality, your character. I know how to put witchcraft on you. I know how to put spirits on you. I know how to put infirmity on you, premature death on you. I, will, I have skills to do that, to destroy any human being that I wanted. And when Jesus came for me, I'm like, you sure you want the demon boy? 
And you know what the crazy thing about it? That when I stepped into the church, I had stepped into a place that was unknown. I had no idea. No idea. I thought, I was, I thought God wanted me because he wanted me because I have beautiful hands. And I thought he wanted me to play the piano. <laughs> I thought he was going to make me a piano player. I went for piano school. I heard the voice of God. I was going to be the next, you know, Billy Joe, piano man. That's what I thought I was going to be. So I went to piano class. And after the fifth lesson, they threw me out. <laughs> the lady said to me, <laughs> true story. God, the lady said to me, stay after class. I need to talk to you. And I was a young Christian. I was like, Psh, I got this. This witch is going to bless me with a piano. God's going to use this witch to bless me with a piano. Her news was, you, you don't come back to class. You suck. You slow, you slowing up the class. I said, what do you mean I'm slowing up the class? These people here are blind. She said, but they can play. I was stuck. Everybody was like, wear hair. And I was stuck. And Mary had a little lamp. That's the first crap they teach you. So I was stuck on Mary. The rest of the other stuff wasn't coming out. I, I, I don't know if I hit the C or the whatever. It was just a disaster. I got thrown out. And so that's why I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for my salvation. Beyond grateful for my salvation. I've given up everything to walk with him. I've given up everything. I have no agenda. I have no plan. I have nothing. I seek him in the morning. I seek him at night. And I seek him between during the day because I am mindful of him. I don't, I'm out of pocketbook on a Sunday. you get that later. I'm out of pocketbook on a Sunday. Jesus to me is a lifestyle. I talk to him throughout the day. I talk to him everywhere I stop, everywhere I go. I have conversations with him. I talk, I hear the voice of God as you see the as I hear the voice of God so clear. It's like you hear, the, it's like you see the sun, the sun in the, in the blue sky. That's how I hear his voice. So clear when he speaks to me. Because it's just a relationship that I'm hungry for. To hear his voice and walk with him and hear him direct me. When I was a devil worshiper, I knew all the voice of demon, principality, territory, spirit, familiar spirits. I knew all the voice of the demons that ran and ran, the marine spirit, water spirits. I knew the voice. I knew marine spirits and water spirits that I had contact with that would come out the ocean for six months and become walk the earth as humans and then go back into the ocean. I had contracts after contract. I ran out of contracts to do contracts and ceremonies and rituals with demons. I did them all from the age of eight to the age of 35. I got married on Halloween, so I don't know how Christians got the audacity to celebrate Halloween. You know, but a devil worshiper when you celebrate Halloween. Because when you put on the costume, I don't care if you, what you put on, you can be little Noah. Don't mean nothing. Because when you put on something on that holiday, you represent, you are celebrating a system. You're celebrating something demonic, despicable, that God hates. And you put on something and you change your identity to what that is. So I had a Halloween wedding. I had a, a real Halloween wedding, a demonic wedding in October of that year. I had a crazy Halloween wedding. I was, I mean, witches and warlock came to bless my wedding. And even Anton LaVeyne said, I, I think every Christian parent, at least one time a year, you celebrate the devil. So when you open doors and portals and gateways and you open avenues of the demonic side, you don't have to do Ouija boy. You don't have to be Harry Potter, loser. Madeline Manson, challenge him too. I, I actually, I, I, how you call that Instagram crap? <laughs> when you get message, come on, young people, help me out. I DM, I, I DM Madeline Manson three times already. I'm, I'm very disappointed with you. <laughs> I'm very disappointed with you. You hang out with Justin, you hang out with Kanye, but you don't want to hang out with me. <laughs> Three times, I'm still waiting for him to email me, or DM me, whatever you call it. <laughs> I'm saying, DM me, because I got something for you. I got the five-fold ministry <laughs> for you. You're I promise you, you'll never rip up a Bible again, and you will never take the Lord's name in vain. Yeah. Teach you spiritual warfare. Amen. 
I want to talk to you about, let me just talk to you real quick. It, it's a scripture that is, is amazing. In, in, in Deuteronomy 11.11, 11, it says, it, it says uh, Deuteronomy 11.11, 11, it says here, uh, it says here, let me just give it to you right here. It says, it says, the land, let me, my phone here is whacking out. My phone needs deliverance. <laughs> let me see if I get this here right. It says, it says, it says, it says, but the land which you cross over, possess, right, is a land uh, that have hills and valleys, which drinks the water, the rain from heaven. L li listen, the land that you cross over, the land that you, it's, it's, not a, it's a spiritual thing for us. In Deuteronomy, and in, in Old Testament, everything that happened, spiritual warfare, them, it was on the physical. They had to fight the Philistine. They had to fight the, it was a physical situation that took place with the Israelites. But in, in the New Testament, everything turns over to the spiritual, the land that you cross over, the spiritual land. Because you see, we, we, we go, we, we, we talk about glory to glory, but between the glory and glory, the devil lives between your glory and glory. The devil lives between the promised land of your life when you move from glory to glory. The devil lives between between the glory and glory movement. The devil lives in those opportunities because the devil understands that from every promised land that God gives you, every season, every moment, every opportunity, the devil understands that you have to cross a battlefield to get to the promised land. That's what, I don't. That's why I don't know how people in churches they preach about generation of blessings and blessings and blessing. I'm like, well, what do I do with these demons that are, that I have to medicate? That you go to the doctors, and doctors are good because I, I respect doctors and I love doctors because God used doctors to do AI surgeries in the time I've been a Christian to keep my eyesight because the, the demonic attacks that come over my life. I had eight eye surgeries to, and the demonic attacks that come over my life that God has brought doctors to heal my eyesight. Okay, so I understand doctors, but I don't understand one thing. Doctors say, here, take this medicine. It's going to make you feel well, but then you have to go back and get a refill. So I don't know how that works. Just me thinking. <laughs> it's supposed to make me better, but I have to go get refills. I don't know how that works. Understand? So, so I, I, want, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Uh, and every, every promised land that God gives you, you have to confront a battlefield. Spiritual warfare is about the battlefield. It's about being relentless, untouchable, unmovable, unshakable. I don't care if the devil suck and punch me, but the longer he don't move me from the spot that God has me, from the season that I'm in, the season that I'm going. You see, I could be shaken. The devil can shake me, but he can't move me in the spirit realm. The devil can suck and punch me, but not move me in the spirit realm. Because the devil has four components that he come at you. He has four components that the devil comes at you. He comes from the north. That's one component, the north. The north, that means that you're confronting something in front of you that, that God is testing you where to cross over to your glory to glory movement. It's nothing has to do with a new car. Sorry to disappoint you. A bigger house. That's carnal. That's why we got so many carnal Christians in the church today. We got no spiritual warfare Christians in the church. We got no but carnal flesh Christians in the church because they take the scriptures and they dress it up to whatever fits you. And whatever fits you, that means you created a Jesus that fits you, but it's not the one that the Bible that Paul preaches. That's why you curse. That's why you curse. It, 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 you think about it. Glory to glory, it's maturity from maturity. Glory to glory means from steps to step till I get to the last step, which is heaven, where I'm there with Jesus. Glory to glory, it's a, it, it, it is a place that, that I'm, I'm a church for Jesus Christ. I'm at the book of Numbers. How is it the book of Numbers is a church that 40 years, they started geographically in one place. After 40 years later, they're still in the same place. That's the Christian that grows up, grows old, but then it grows up. That's the Christian that is deformed. That is the Frankenstein church, a deformed Christian, but you belong to the house of Satan because Satan is looking for a church too. It's called the counterfeit church. So how is it from glory to glory? You think you got a Honda, now you got a Honda. I just moved from glory to glory. I had a two-bedroom house, and I got a five-bedroom house. That's not glory to glory. That's just God being good to you. You don't deserve it. Because there's nothing you got you deserve. Nothing you got you earn. 
No, you, God, you didn't do nothing. You didn't do nothing. God would just open the window for him, and he had mercy, decided to pour the blessing upon you because there's nothing that you earn, deserve. There's nothing that you can, you can, there's nothing you can do to have God bless you. He bless you because he's good. He blesses you because you, he's, you, he is good. He didn't bless you because, you, well, I, I, I didn't sin this week. Did you take your medication? He didn't bless you because of that. So, 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 so I want to talk to you about, listen, listen, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me break something down to you. Let me, let me just break something down to you. Let me start here. Spiritual warfare is about this. When God gives you a dream, a dream means, not like I, I took a nap, a dream means he gives you a calling, a purpose. You with me? When he gives you a dream, that means when God calls you, he didn't call you to sit in church. God has got a purpose. He called you because it's a purpose in you. God didn't call you because, you know, he, he, he has room in heaven for you. Because if heaven was about just bringing you to heaven, then it would be a waste. God called you because God has got a purpose. And he called you because he put a purpose on you, right? He put a purpose on you. When God gives you, listen, when God gives you, when God gives you a purpose, when he gives you a calling, you will always be tested. It will always be tested. The pressure that you're going through right now, listen, the pressure in your life right now is not to crush you, but it's to pull something inside of you so you know who you are in Christ. Because you're walking around without no identity because you don't know who you are. Because the devil has robbed you from your identity. Understand? It, it, listen. Listen. When God has... Something significant, that means purpose. God has purpose. Something significant, God has purpose, right? Because God has got a purpose, right? Listen, expect the devil to send out his special forces to come get you. The devil ain't, the devil ain't worried about no carnal Christians. The devil ain't worried about no carnal Christians. The devil fears Christians that got a real purpose. And it's in the will of God. Understand? The devil fears Christians that are in the will of God. Listen, it might be. That's why tonight you're here. Because you're under attack. Your purpose is under attack. There's two purposes. The purpose of God and the purpose of the devil. The purpose of God and the purpose of the devil. There's two purposes. It's going on. The hills and the valleys in the purpose. The devil lives in between. The devil lives in between. It's called the battlefield. It's called the battle. Between you and your purpose and your promised land, there is a devil that's trying to trip you up. There will always be a, listen, there will always, listen, what do you do with your Red Sea moment in your life? That's a testing. God will always send a Red Sea moment in your life. What do you do? In your Red Sea moment. You with me? I'm bringing you somewhere to understand where you stand in Christ today. Because you need to measure yourself. You need to do inventory of yourself. You need to make an assessment of who you are in Christ. Because if you're walking around with a Christian without an identity and without a purpose, and the devil has robbed you, and the devil has polluted you, contaminated you, the devil has incarcerated you, it's time to get free tonight. Because spiritual warfare is maintaining your salvation, maintaining your deliverance, maintaining your mind, maintaining your thoughts, your thinking. Spiritual warfare is all about that. Because if you don't, you become a carnal Christian instead of belonging to the, instead of being the bride of Christ, you're the Frankenstein. <laughs> there's two trials, there's two, there's always a resting moment. Got me? You with me? There's always a resting moment that God will bring in front of you to see what you're made of. And there will always be another moment it's called a th when a threat hits your house. What do you do when a threat hits your house? Listen, people celebrate Martha and Mary. I think they were two crazy sisters. I thought that was like Wanda and Maria. See, 
The Bible speaks for itself. Martha and Mary were crazy. They were delusional. And people don't see it that way. People say, well, why would you say that, John? Let me break it down to you. Martha and Mary, they were like, they, they were all in with Jesus. They were all in with Jesus. You with me so far? They were all in until a threat hit their home. What do you do when a threat hits your house? What are you made of? What are you made of when a threat hits your house? Mary and Martha, a threat hit their house. What happened to them? Lazarus died. When a threat hits your house, what are you made of? Are you the bride of Christ or are you the Frankenstein? Are you, are you the real Christian or are you the Christian the all? Are you the real bride of Christ or are you the Frankenstein? A counterfeit church. A counterfeit church is, is a counterfeit church, a Christian, that, that, it, that it, a, 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 a bipolar Christian. A bipolar Christian is a Christian that is carnal. A carnal Christian because Mary and Martha was carnal. Because, when, see, they were okay when Jesus came to the house. Jesus come to my house on Tuesday. We watch Netflix. We eat. We chill. They were all <laughs> with Jesus. Oh, you know Jesus is my homeboy, right? He come to my house. He come to my crib. You know Jesus is my poppy. He come to my house. We hang out. He's in the crib. But when something dies in your house and something dies in your life, what do you say about Jesus? You see, Mary and Martha, the Bible said that Jesus wept. You with me? But Jesus didn't weep because Lazarus died. Let's not be theologian. I'm not a theologian. I got off the little bus. <laughs> but, but the Holy Spirit told me the reason Jesus cried and the reason Jesus wept, because Martha and Mary, when the threat hit the house, instead of celebrating Jesus, there was, God, they, see, you got to be careful. What comes out of your mouth? Because the, the devil has legal rights over your mouth. The Bible says life and death picks life. Whatever, but Proverbs 18, 21 says the spirit of life and death lays on your tongue. And the devil has a demon today standing next to your mouth to see what comes out of your mouth. Because everything, everything that dead comes out of your mouth, the devil has legal rights over your words. So, so here Mary and Martha, death came out of their mouth. They took the Son of God and they put him on trial with an accusation spirit. Where were you? My brother died. Why well, you didn't come? We call for you. We ask to come. Why well, you didn't come? If you came, my brother would have been alive. If you came, my brother would have been healed. An accusation spirit came upon them to accuse the Son of God and put him on trial and make him feel like nothing when he was the, he was a blessing to you when you was on the mountaintop, but now you're in the valley and now you got now you're putting Jesus on trial. Instead of lifting him up, you're putting him down. And the devil loves that. The devil loves when you we put Jesus on trial. The devil loves when we question God. I don't question God. The Bible says sit down and raise him. I talk to him, but I don't have to question him because who am I to question him? And when you question him, that you give the devil legal right over your spiritual wall. You give the devil legal right over your life. Listen, my sister died in 2021. She was 29 years old. My sister left two, two daughters, one six, one seven, my two little nieces. Never questioned God. I prayed for my sister for healing. Didn't happen. You know, I did David. I got up from the floor, and I celebrated Jesus. So, so, so this, is, this is the spiritual warfare I'm talking to you about. I'm talking to you about carnal Christianity. Carnal Christianity. I'm talking to you about Christ, carnal Christianity. The devil loves the fact that you become a carnal Christian. A carnal Christian is a dangerous Christian. A carnal Christian is not making heaven. Because the, the 10th virgin, Matthew 25, there were five carnal, five carnal virgins. The 10th virgin represents the church. You with me? And 50% of the church is not making heaven. You with me? The, the, and Matt, you know why they were carnal? They all felt, they were dressed the same. They fell asleep. They fell asleep. They fell asleep. The storm hit. The, the, the storm hit. The trial hit. The tornado hit. Hit them. They got up. And what they say? What they say to the other ones? Give me something. Give me what you got. And what they say? The other virgin said, you could go out and buy it. And they'll pay a price for what I got. But we want me lay hands on me, put oil on me, anoint me, grab me, touch me, 
do all this thing to me. You don't want to pray. Give me your anointing. Give me your anointing. Yeah, listen, baby, your anointing course. God don't give the anointing to a lazy Christian. You got to bend your knee. You have to sacrifice. You have to cry. You have to pay a price before God gives you an anointing. Anointing on TV, they don't, don't pimp some TV. They're telling you, oh, send a thousand dollars. I'll send you my anointing. That, that Simon is a sorcerer. That Simon is a sorcerer. This, this, Simon wanted to pay for the anointing. So they're asking you, pay for the anointing. Pay for, t- ten virgin. Give me what you got. Go buy. Cardinal Christianity is ramping in the house of God today. We got cardinal churches all over the place. And, 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 and it breaks the heart of God that he paid a price for you and you know but a cardinal Christian. A cardinal Christian. Listen. Cardinal Christianity. The devil wants to convert you. God wants to give you a purpose and a destiny. And the devil wants to convert you to a carnal Christian. And today the church is filled with carnal Christianity. Carnal believers all over the church today, copycat, deformed. The bride of Satan instead of the bride of Christ. You with me so far? Or you want a happy message? <laughs> if, I can give you diabetes if you want. <laughs> I can give you spiritual diabetes if you want. I can color you happy. <laughs> Satan is looking for a bride too. Jesus wants a bride, Satan wants a bride. Jesus wants a church, Satan wants a counterfeit church. When I went to, when I went to demon church, I was when I came to Christian church, I was not impressed. I was not impressed. Because what you did, we did better. You lay hands, we lay hands in the demonic church. You lay holy hands, we lay demonic hands. You spoke in tongues, we spoke in demonic tongues. You, 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 you fell backwards in the spirit, we fell backwards in the demonic. So I said, Lord, I, I was doing it for 25 years. Why would you bring me here? I said, I was doing it for 25 years. I did it better than they did. Why would you bring me here? God said, because they don't have one thing that the demon church don't have. That the, the, my, my real church has is the presence of God. Amen. The presence of God is what we have. And if you don't have the presence, you got nothing. You got, the only thing you have is a carnal Christianity walk with the Lord. And the devil loves carnal Christian, a form of God, but denying the power. Wow. And there, there's churches today and brothers and sisters that are filled with carnal Christianity. You have, you have a form of God, in it, but you don't have no relationship. You have a form of God, but you don't know the presence of God. You, you are high on the gift, but you don't know the presence. You with me so far? Amen. Don't let me get the sheep right here, brother. Get them. Get them. Get those people that are late. <laughs> I just be, I'm going to turn into a carnal Christian in for a second. <laughs> Listen. Carnal Christianity, listen, it's a counterfeit. That's why I, I don't, I don't, listen, I grew up in the projects, baby. I don't believe in that 2%, 1% milk. To me, that's counterfeit. That's water. <laughs> give me the cow. Give me the real stuff. I don't believe, I got friends of mine, they, they're PhD people, you know, they, 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 they're from South Korea. They're like very famous scientists. I don't know what God hooked me up with them. It's like the little bus with the big butts, right? So God hooked me up with these people, and they're like, John, you got you to gotta eat healthy. You got to go to Whole Foods. <laughs> Whole Foods. Whole Foods is racist. Whole Foods don't like black people and Puerto Ricans and Mexicans. Whole Foods is racist. They keep us out with a $7 apple. <laughs> Who's going to buy an apple for $7? <laughs> I mean, I could buy five pounds of apple and AMP for $7. Organic egg. <laughs> I take I take the McDonald's, the powder eggs. It, 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 everything, every anything that is original is always gonna have a counterfeit. That's why when you go, see, I live in New York City, right? So, so New York City, you go to Chinatown, and you can get a Louis <laughs> for your girls. You can get a Louis Vuitton for three hundred dollars. 
and it looks like the real thing. I mean, you can't tell the difference between the Louis in Chinatown and the Louis on 57th Street. You can get a Chanel for $300. You're like, I'm, I'm going there, John. Give me the address. It's a counterfeit. It looks like the real thing, but it's not. You can get a Rolex for $45 in Canal Street in New York City. And if you look at it, you're like, is that Rolex real? A counterfeit to the real, to the great original. A counterfeit. I mean, a, 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 how would you call that? Like a Rolex, a real Rolex, it costs you like 20 grand. But you can get one for $45. I got a friend of mine, he sell, he Christian, he sell fake watches. I said, I ain't gonna wear that, man. I said, that's a sin. <laughs> I sell your watch off for $150. I said, no. I said, I can't do it. <laughs> if God wants me to have a real Rolex, he'll provide. Yeah. I'm buying a watch, I'm buying a Rolex, a fake Rolex for $150 of the devil. <laughs> A counterfeit. Listen, this is this is this is this is the carnal Christian. I'm gonna give it to you. Examine yourself. The carnal Christian is this. Let me give you the, let me give you the, the patterns and cycles of a counterfeit Christian. Maybe I got quiet. <laughs> a carnal Christian is be normal. Fit in. Don't make no waves. Be mediocre. Secret friendly. With me? If you're more concerned, I'm one more time. I'm Puerto Rican. I talk fast. <laughs> okay, I'll give, you, give you one more time. Listen, a counterfeit Christian, examine yourself. A counterfeit Christian is, they tell you to be normal. Be normal. Fit in. Do, do what, another fit in, do, do what everybody else is doing. Do what everybody else is doing the church fit in. Go to your Starbucks church. Order your latte. Let, let, let the dead pastor preach to you. Fit in. Don't make no waves. Don't say nothing. Don't speak your mind. Don't, don't, don't challenge. Don't because, you know, just be normal. Fit in. And be mediocre. That's what the devil wants. If you're more concerned about the people what they have to say, then God has to say, you're a counterfeit Christian. You're a carnal Christian. Fit in. Dress like them. That means no anointing. You with me so far? Dress like them. No anointing. Copycats. Be a copycat. Walk like them. Be a copycat. Go where they go. You with me? Go where they go. This is a counterfeit Christian. Do what they do. Act like them. Act like them. Don't be a great original. Be a duplicate. Be a copycat. Be 2% milk. <laughs> you with me? God, listen, go where they go to the dead churches. See, uh, this, is, this, is, this is what the devil is setting up the stage for Christians today. You see it all over. You see, it, you, you see the scandals that are happening in the churches today, right? Do you see the scandals that are happening in the house of God today? Because these, these, these are carnal Christians. And I'm, it's not a put down. It's a wake up call. It's not a put down. I'm not here to judge nobody. That's not my job. My job is to wake you up and point you to heaven. You be mad at me today, but at least you make heaven. When you see me Hallelujah Boulevard, then you give me a high five. Okay? Being a carnal Christian is playing the devil's game. Playing to the devil's hands. What is a carnal Christian? I'm glad you asked me. A carnal Christian is this. Let me give you a carnal Christian. A carnal Christian, there was a true story one time. There was a famous actor with a famous voice. And he had an iconic voice. And they invited him down to New York City one time. And he came down to New York City to make an event. And he went down to New York City to do this event. And he sat there on stage. And people came because he was, a, he was a famous actor. People came because he had a famous voice. And people came because, you know, his voice was so iconic in movies and documentaries. And somehow, somehow, some pastor went there that night and he sat in the audience. This is what a carnal Christian is. I'm going to give it to you. 
they sat in the audience and people were raising their hands and saying, will not you quote this part of the movie, quote this part of the documentary. And they was raising their hands and quoting the part of the documentary, quoting the part of the movie. And people was, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. People were loving it, ooh, ah. And ooh, ah, you know, and all that. So the pastor got the courage to stand up and raise his hand. He said, could you, could you do me a favor, Mr. Actor? Now listen, this is a carnal Christian. Listen, could you quote Psalms 23 for me? And the actor with the famous voice and the beautiful voice with the iconic voice says, sure, I can do it in one condition. So he had to know God. He had to you know, somehow know the scriptures. Because he turned around, he said, I do it for you in one condition. And, 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 and the pastor that was all beat down for years of preaching and pastoring, he said, yeah, what is the condition? He said, because after I do it, you do it after. And the pastor said, sure, you do it, then I do it after. We, we have a deal. So the, so the man got up and he quoted Psalms 23 in such an elegant voice and such a voice and such an iconic voice. I mean, he just resonated with the people. It rang to the, to the whole hall. It rang his iconic voice and then when he quoted Psalms 23. And you know, as, soon as, he, as soon as he finished, he got a standing ovation. And then now it was the pastor's turn. And the pastor got up and he quoted Psalms 23. And in the end, he didn't get no standing ovation, but there was every, in his place, there was not even one dry eye. And then the, acts, the actor later, what happened? And the actor said, I knew the words, but he knew the God of the word. <laughs> he said, I knew the words, but he knew the shepherd. And that's what makes the difference between a carnal Christian. You might know the word, but you don't know the shepherd. <laughs> and the real believer knows the shepherd. That's why David said, and the David said in the battlefield, the Lord is my shepherd. I should not want. There's nothing devil you can do for me. I got it all in him. The Lord is my shepherd. David knew the Lord. But the actor knew the words. And many Christians are carnal. You know the words, but you have no relationship with the shepherd. And that's the difference between Christianity and the carnal Christian. You got a pocket full of scriptures, but you don't know the shepherd. Even, 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 even Job came to a point in chapter 38 that God addressed him. God is off the hook. Jesus is no punk. Jesus addressed Joe. He said, put on your shirt, SpongeBob. We need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> addressed Job, and Job said this, the righteous man in his time. He said, I knew of him, but now I know him. I mean, think about it. And God, was, all God said, God spoke, God spoke about things that didn't make no sense to Job. Zoology, monkeys and giraffes. And he said, now I know you. And if you don't know him in the times we're going. See, God wants, listen, God made us to be lighthouses. And lighthouse is an attraction until it gets dark. And when it gets dark, we're going to shine. I promise you that. Listen, and, and listen, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm taking you somewhere. See, because the devil is robbing you. You think, you think, oh, I'm, I'm uh, there's a component of, uh, there's a component of co-practice, witchcraft, oppression, depression. There's a component to all that of, you know, suicide spirits, you know, depression spirits, uh, you know, all, all, you know, pharmacia spirit, alcohol spirit, pornography spirit, lust spirits, you know. There's a component to that in spiritual warfare. See, we might get distracted with all that, but we, we're not right with God. You can might be, see, the devil knows how to throw a counterfeit fight. That's why David, you see, David, David was young when he fought Goliath, right? You with me? David was 16 when he got in the battlefield with Goliath. And David had courage. Because, see, it takes courage to be a great original for God. It takes courage to step out of the boat, Peter. It takes courage. And, and David had courage. But this is the key. What you fight and kill quick, it's not your fight. It's a counterfeit fight. Because David, David missed the opportunity. David missed. See, the devil was standing on his blind spot. See, the devil knows how to stand. See, when I was in the demonic world, I walked in the shadows of the demonic. So I knew how to walk to Christians and stand on your blind spot. 
and sucker punch you and steal your identity, steal your purpose, steal your destiny, steal your mind, steal your mindset. But you had the answer, and, and when I, f I was done with you, you had question marks. Because I knew how to fight with words. I knew how to fight. I knew how to drill you into my fight through words. That's why Adam and Eve, they had a conversation with the serpent. They lost the condo. <laughs> the only per <laughs> the, 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 uh, Esau must have had a conversation with the devil and lost his birthrights. Cain must have had a conversation with the devil and murdered his brother. When the devil... God, the only person that was able to have a conversation with the devil and beat him down like Charlie Brown was Jesus in the wilderness. Amen. Jesus was the only one that can have a conversation. You don't have to have a conversation with the devil. The Bible said resist and rebuke. Yeah. Resist and rebuke. When the devil comes at me, he starts throwing stuff and flutters in my mind and flutters in my thought and flutters in my thinking. I just stand and I say rebuke you in Jesus' name. The Lord rebukes you. I don't have to stay in time. And, and, when, you have a, when, and then when you have a crazy dream. You like to, let me call the intercessors, see what they say. <laughs> let me call Julio. Julio, I had this dream, and this serpent was chasing me all night long. I think it might have been a python. And I stopped in Starbucks. I got me a latte. And then, I, and then after I drank my latte, I kept running. And then the serpent was after me, and, and I kept running. Then I stopped at Krispy Kreme, and I bought me like a six <laughs> donuts, and I kept running. What do you think, Julio? Uh, what that dream means? <laughs> You're a carnal Christian. <laughs> because whatever you speak and you don't destroy and uproot and curse it to the root, as soon as you wake up, it will cultivate to be a reality in your life. Because when I did witchcraft to people, I know how to throw witchcraft on people, and I know how to put witchcraft in your dream so you could talk about it, so you could manifest it to a reality. So when the devil put stuff in my dream, I had dreamed that I was in witchcraft party with the same, you know, same, uh, same Gilligan Island that I got off. <laughs> same people. They're like, John, I'm glad you're here. Welcome back. I said, I'm not back. Oh, I'm glad you're here. You want a ceremony? You want a cleansing? You want us to do something for you? I'm going to get out of it. And the Lord rebukes you. Jesus, I start preaching the gospel in the dream. They're all upset in the dream. Even in the dream, they can't get me. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the dream, they're like, man, we can't get them in the dream. <laughs> they can't even get me in the dream because I, I'm armed and dangerous when I'm asleep. And this is, this is the key. This is, this is the key to dreams. This is the key. See, the devil wants you to sleep, but he don't want you to rest. Then people sleep for eight hours, you wake up tired. Think about that. Spiritual warfare. So what I do when I go to bed tonight, this is what I say. I don't say, oh, my honey, my wife. I don't say that. Oh, my daughter. I said, Lord, I got stuff in my life going on. I cast my cares up to you because you up all night anyway. I'm going to sleep. And I go to bed because I trust him. I believe him. I walk with him. In the morning when I get up, Lord, give me the wisdom for the day that I need. And you help me be mindful of you throughout the day. That's my walk. So you could bring any witch. You could bring warlocks to my meeting. They come to my meeting. I was in, I was in St. Croix one time. And the, the, Tomorrow, I tell you, I was like, Paul, I've been on, I've been on propeller planes to go preach the gospel to First Nation American Indian, way up in Canada, halfway to North Pole, minus 17 degrees, preach the gospel. I've been, I've been on seaplanes to cross islands to go preach the gospel. I've been on boats, travel because there's no airport to go preach the gospel to places. I've been in the most inconvenient places to preach Jesus. And witches and warlocks come to my meeting. And I remember when I was in St. Croix, this warlock came. He said, listen to me. I'm the warlock from St. Croix. I came for you. Christians are a bunch of punks. They opened, it was an altar call, and that thing split up like the Red Sea. And it was me and the warlock. <laughs> <laughs> it was just us two right here, like, I, I, I'm your Huckleberry. I'm your Doc Holiday baby. <laughs> I'll be your tombstone. And he said to me, <laughs> I, I said, you sure you want some of this? And he said, yeah, I want it. He said, I want it. I came to destroy you. I, that's my plan. That's my purpose. He said, I came to destroy you. I said, okay, you came to destroy me? I said, you sure you got all your arsenals? You sure you got all your spiritual warfare stuff? Because I'm ready. 
And he said, what do you mean? You don't talk like a Christian. I said, I'm not a Christian. He said, what do you mean you're not a Christian? I said, I told you, I'm not one. Now, you want Psalms 91? Now? Or you want John 3.16? If you want John 3.16, I'll be a Christian. But if you want spiritual warfare, then I'm not a Christian. These are Christians, not here. I said, so you want to do this? Because I'm here for three days. So I don't want, when we start the spiritual warfare fight, I don't want you to say to me that you weren't ready, prepare, and you didn't have all your demonic stuff with you. So you can come back the third day and bring everything you got, because when I open up this kind of weapon on you, <laughs> I told him, I don't want you to think that it wasn't a fair fight. I said, he said, I got everything. Bring it on. I said, you sure? I put my hands on him. I mean, electricity came out of my hand. This dude jumped. He jumped that way. He fell over there. He started to twist like a pretzel. He turned into a python. He swept the whole entire church on the floor like this, screaming and just foaming at his mouth. And then the Christians were saying to me, ain't you going to pray for him? He might die. I said, let him die. I don't care. <laughs> now David said in the Psalms, punch him in the mouth. That's what I just did. Dropped him. And then he was like, 40 minutes, I let him slide all over the place. I mean, he was, I think that's from Roomba who got the idea. <laughs> from this guy. Roomba got the idea from this guy. Because this dude did a great job cleaning the church. I mean, the floor was spotless. And then I, pr and then I pray for him. Teach him how the spiritual warfare works. I got witches. See, you got to get discernment. I got witches. I've been in California. You've been in California. I, witches come up to me with a, with a brand new wallet. John, I just come here to bless you. And I'm already irritated in my spirit. I know something is not right. And I want to give this offering to you. A $100 bill. I don't lust after money. So you can't get me. I, you know, I don't lust over money. So you, you're not going to get me, me lusting over money. You know, it, it, it's here. I, I give it to you. And, it's, you know, thank you for everything you do. So I grab it. I don't put it in my pocket because if I put it in my pocket, I lose the fight. Not stupid. So I told the usher, you hungry? And the usher said, I'm very hungry. I said, here's $100. Have lunch on me. <laughs> <laughs> because the witchcraft is not for him. It's for me. So he's not going to do nothing to him. All he's going to do is he's going to get a good lunch for $100. <laughs> so I give it to him. I said, I'm not lusting over money. I lust over my wife. My wife is a hottie. <laughs> lust over her. But I get <laughs> You're missing it. Discernment. Listen, listen, listen. It takes courage to walk with God. It takes courage to walk with God. It takes rejection. It takes pain. It takes hurt. It takes betrayal. It takes all that so you can bear the marks of Jesus. See, God, the devil wants you to fit in. See, don't ask God to guide your step if you're not willing to move. Don't ask God to guide my step when you're not willing to move your steps. Because it takes courage to be a great original. It takes courage to walk with God. I just got a report. I just did a, a new book. It's coming out next year, right? And I don't even promote my books. Because promotion comes from God. All my books are bestsellers on Amazon. And I, I got off the little bus. I had A and gym, A and lunch. Picture that. <laughs> and God done the rest. And I, and I just heard news that Jonathan Carr, the, new, the movie that came out, Harbinger, it came on DVD because I'm in the same publishing house with him now, uh, Charisma. And now they took, my, they took my testimony and they took my new book and they have they put it in, as an insert in his new DVD movie that's going to be all over the world. You see the favor of God? When you do, when you, when you, listen, when you chase the face of Jesus, not the hands, the hands is that give me, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. When you... <laughs> Because when you go to the prayer closet, you got a Costco list. That stuff don't work. That's why, you, that's why you haven't seen anything in your life happen, manifest in your life, supernatural. Because you're chasing the hands, you're not chasing the face. And when you chase the hands, you, it's a gimme, gimme mentality. Understand? And, and, and the first thing you should do in your prayer closet is minister to his heart first. Minister to him so he can minister to you. You with me? I've been in every TV show you can imagine. I've been to Madeline Hickey. Me and her are like this. 
We like home girl. That's my home girl. She's 90 now. I've been on Daystar. I thank God when the last time I was there, Marcus was still alive. We took pictures. I've been on Daystar. I've been on TBN. I've been on Cruffle Dollar Show. I mean, sit, Uncle Sid, crazy Sid. I, <laughs> I've been with him. I've been to every show. I never sent a letter. I never sent anything to tell me, put me on your show. Because promotion comes from God. When you seek the Lord first, he will open doors and opportunities supernatural in your life that you will never, ever do on your own. The problem is that you, when you do things on your own, you take the pen out of his hands and you try to write your own story, then you'd be spending time in Staples getting white out. <laughs> but if you let him write your story, God don't make no mistakes. You with me? Right? Because he's writing my story. I'm up to my ninth book. This is my favorite right here. This is my favorite book right here. Right here. I carry it sometimes. That's my favorite book right here. You know who's reading my book now? Favor. Mel Gibson. He's the only one that got backbone in Hollywood to read the book. Because the rest of the other cronies, they said they, they, the other cronies, they call themselves Christians in Hollywood. That they bend down to the golden image. I sat and had lunch with them, and they chickened out. The people that the unplanned movie, they, they, the unplanned movie, them two crazy friends, whatever you call them, Chuck and Harry. <laughs> I had lunch with them in Burbank, and uh, they got upset with me because I exposed the system of the demonic of the Catholic Church. They're like, you talking about Catholics. I'm not talking about Catholic. Catholic, Catholic people love Jesus. I'm talking about your crazy Pope. <laughs> and your crazy holy water. And this, what, what, what does that cry? What that means? And what that ash stuff here, the mark of the beast. What the heck is that? And what's up with Mary? <laughs> they said, no movie. I said, so what? <laughs> I said, promotion comes from God. Yeah. So if God is not going to use you, he's not going to use you, then you're not, you're not welcome here. Who's paying for lunch? <laughs> listen, listen, let me, let me give you something real quick. Let me give you something real quick. I just told you. Listen, the key to spiritual warfare growth is the willingness to go, to go out, out of your way to minister to God. You understand that? The spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare, right? The key to spiritual warfare grow is the willingness to go out of your way and minister to God. To minister to God. Listen. And then you will find him in your inconvenient places, and you will find him in your uncomfortable places. He'll be there and meet you there. Amen. He will meet you there. If, if, listen, if your life, listen, if you go, if you, the spiritual, my spiritual growth with God, that's what witches can't get me. That's what witchcraft don't work on me. I'm not depressed. I'm 58, right? I'm a sexy 58. <laughs> and, I, and I want you to listen to this carefully. No medication. No high blood pressure. Okay. Eight, eight eye surgeries. I died March 11, 2019. I died in my apartment, left my body. And 1999, I went to hell. I, I died in my apartment, went to hell. And God, God, I met Jesus in hell. Make a long story. I'll give you some more tomorrow. I met Jesus in hell. And, I, and that was October. I was going to hurt a lot of people with witchcraft. And God came to my car, came, put me in anesthesia sleep. I, I said, I died, really. And I left my body, went to hell, met Jesus, put me back in my body. Became a Christian, right? And then I had a hundred thousand dollar worth of witchcraft things in my house. I threw it all away, completely threw it away to follow him. In 2019, March 11, I die in my apartment. It's like off the hook when you die, when you're a Christian. People saying, no, "I don't want to die yet," because you're tied up to this world. That's why, cardinal Christian. I die March 11, 2019, my apartment. I was laying in my sofa. I died. 
I was leaving. It, it's an amazing thing when you die. Let me explain something. It's so cool when you die. It's, it's like you're leaving your body, right? You're leaving your body. And that's what my body did. I was completely dead. And I looked at my body. I was, you know how people sit and sit rough. They say, oh, I, I died. And I looked at my body, and it looks so ugly. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> not with this guy. <laughs> and, not, and not with me. I was like, oh, I'm going to miss you. you know, I was like, you sexy Puerto Rican down there. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> the tr I'm leaving my body. And you feel like a magnetic force taking you up. And then behind you, you feel like, like the best way I can explain it, it's like a door closed behind you. So you leave eternity past to eternity present. So I was, I was leaving, and then in, 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 in I, I looked in my windows I, like I was going. My windows are big in my apartment in New York City. So the windows opening, uh, the sky was opening up. And I, and, and I, was, uh, I was nothing in my thoughts saying, oh, my mom's going to cry. My mom's going to be heartbroken, and my, my, I'm going to miss my daughter. Nothing like that. You have such a peace when, you, when you're leaving. I mean, it's such an incredible peace I was leaving. And all I said was one thing. And it wasn't even my words. All I said was, Lord, I'm disappointed you're taking me home early. If you would have left me here, I would have done so much more for you. And from that moment, he put me right back in my body. <laughs> and don't know how I went back into my body. And then the crazy thing, when I went back into my body, I felt like I went to the Chinese joint and they starched my shirt too much. <laughs> my whole body felt like it was starch. <laughs> right? No offense, Chinese people. I order puff of rice and chicken wings. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is Asian, so I can say crazy stuff like that. So I, so when I went back into my body, I felt like when I felt like something, I, I was being stretched right back to normal, because I, I I was wrinkled up like this, right, and I was being stretched, and then it felt like you could feel everything in your system inside starting to move mechanically again, and it took some minute before my hands were normal. And everything was normal. Don't know why I did that. So I went to hell in 1999. I died in 2019. I had eight eye surgery. I went to bankruptcy court. I met Michael Jackson in welfare. I was in the welfare signing up for food stamps as a Christian, the Ponzi scheme. I went to welfare, and the first person to call on the application was Michael Jackson. So I knew I was in a good place. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Michael getting food stamps? I'm cool. I can, I can do this. <laughs> There's a guy named Michael Jackson. I was like, but your mother killed you with that name. Because I'm sure you can't sing like Michael. No one could sing like Michael Jackson, by the way. But anyway, but getting back, it, it, this, is, this is what I'm trying to tell you. God has everything about you. Don't worry. Don't fear. Don't fret. Don't be discouraged. Don't, don't let the devil sucker punch you. Think and believe false realities that they look real, but they're false, and they're not the truth, what Jesus Christ has for you. See, when we buy into a system, that, like the COVID-19 system, a lot of people die, I understand, but a lot of people die from heart attacks. A lot of people die from high, pr high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma attacks. Many people die, right? So why is it that the COVID-19 went on vacation? Think about it, right? The COVID-19 went on vacation, and the new COVID-19 is the gas pump. <laughs> Your wallet be coughing. I got a mask on my wallet. Because <laughs> it coughs and it's man it manifests at the gas pump, especially California. You get sucker, you get hit hard in California. I mean, one time it was like seven dollars, seven dollars, almost eight dollars in California. And and, and, and this is this is the, this that's the new COVID nineteen. Because you see, the devil knows component and systems. Components, where you fit, where he can put you in what category he can put you and control you and dominate you and own you. That's why Jesus is born outside of the major, because Jesus is born outside of the system. And Jesus died outside of the city. Jesus died outside of the system. But we live for the system because we believe in this whole culture. The devil is into culture. Or it's a black thing. It's a Puerto Rican thing. It's an Asian thing. The devil won't try to fit you into something. Oh, you took the vaccine. Oh, I didn't take the vaccine. Oh, you going to hell. I'm going to heaven. 
the devil knows how to put you in components of cycles to believe something, to act like something, to live somewhere, and you miss what God has for you because God died outside of the system, and you're living for the system because the devil knows system. Every You see the situation about the systems that are happening in the world today, systems all over the world, system control people, control people. It steals your purpose. It steals your destiny, and it makes you a mediocre person. It makes you mediocre. Why do you think they're trying to put, they're trying to take churches now? You got mega, they're not, nothing wrong with a mega church. It's what, depending on what's going on inside the mega church, right? So they're going to take mega churches now that are secret friendly, and they're going to use them against the remnant. You preach against homosexuality, you, you, you go into jail. Joel Osteen don't preach against homosexuality. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a good church. Bishop Jake don't preach against homosexuality. He's a good church. You preach against homosexuality. You're the remnant. You're a bigot. You preach against sin. You're a bigot. We're going to put you in concentration camp because they're preparing it for us in Alaska. And that's what's going to separate the saints from the angels because if it's happening in China and your underground church and it's happening in these other places and hot places like India and other places, these Muslim countries, that we're getting, we're getting, we're getting tortured and we're getting, we're getting tortured. And all you have to say is renounce Christ and they let you go. But the underground church rather die right now before they renounce Christ. You think that you're going to be safe in America? Look at Elmo in the White House. Look at Elmo in the White House. I get more out of white castles. <laughs> See, people don't want the truth. The truth will set you free. Yeah. Right? What system do you belong to? What component the devil has placed you in? What mindset are you living on? Are you living in the mind of Christ? Or are you living on a mindset of a carnal Christian? Because Jesus didn't come for black church, Puerto Rican church. I don't go to Puerto Rican church anyway. They're crazy. Puerto Rican church, you wear makeup, you're going to hell. You wear perfume, you're going to hell. You wear jewelry, you're going to hell. And then all the, the pastors over there, the pastor, the girl, the, the, all the Christian girls in Puerto Rican church are ugly. <laughs> Dressed up with dresses. Been, my grandmother used to wear them dresses. <laughs> they don't even brush their hair because you're going to hell. You got you to gotta, you gotta look holy. You, look, you don't look holy. You look jacked up. That's why you're single. That's why you're single. Ain't no one, nobody want you. You, got your hair, you can't shave your hairs of your, 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 your legs because you're going to hell. And then you say, Pastor, Santo, hallelujah, hermano, get out of here. Whoosh, sit down with your legalism self. Christ didn't die for legalism. You'd be surprised when you get to heaven, who's going to be in heaven? You're going to, select, you're going to be like, you made it? <laughs> <laughs> because Christ is looking for the attitudes and the thoughts of your heart. Amen. So you keep dressing your outer man, but your inner man is spiritually anemic. Amen. Your spiritual man is spiritually anemic. You with me? Let me give you the story of Noah. Let me finish with this. The story of Noah. It's an amazing story, Noah. He preached for 120 years. Only eight people got saved. <coughs> Think about it. 120 years. He preached. Noah preached 120 years. Only eight people got saved. People thought Noah was whacked out. And Noah had to have crazy faith to build ark when he never saw rain. Think about it. In a place that never rained. He don't know what a raindrop looked like. <coughs> but he built an ark. Think about how crazy that is. People must be walking by and say, look at that looney tune. Look at that crazy guy. He's, he's at it again. I want you to catch this. But when the flood came, Noah was right. And Jesus closed the door. And it was over. But this is the part I want you to get. And I, and I want to finish with this. This is what carnal Christian is about. See, a lot of the church, a lot of, a lot of church, come on, let's be real. You pastors, how many cardinal Christians you've seen in your life? A dime a dozen. Let's be real. Let's, 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 let's see. The, you know, I love that Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror. That song, I could make that a Christian song. 
Because you want to look at everybody else's mirror, but you don't want to see yours. And the mirror is that when you look at yourself, do you see Jesus in you? When you see yourself in the mirror, do you see Jesus in you? Or you see carnal Christian. Carnal Christianity, that means that you, you are a compromised Christian and the devil owns legal rights over your life. And you can't discern that if you're in a real church or you're in a dead church. I don't want people to preach me happy. I used to love Debbie Wilkinson. I went to years to the Times Square Church. Debbie Wilkinson preached so awesome. Man, Debbie Wilkinson preached fire, fire. When he said, if you got homosexual, ten if you got homosexual, tendencies or anything homosexual, I ran to the altar because I didn't want to be no Ricky Martin. I ran to the altar. I ran to the altar. I said, Lord, if you see anything in me that, you know, say, hey, if you see anything in me like this, Lord, take it out in the name of Jesus. You remove that devil off me completely. I, I, I went to the altar for every altar call. You can imagine. I don't care what it was because you never know. The, you never know what might jump on you. I went for Debbie Walker to preach conviction. And if you go to YouTube and you see the, a pure bride, look up that, look at his short sermon. He preached conviction. He preached stuff that will get you to heaven. He preached, re, put that in your devotional. Pure bride, go to YouTube and listen to those preaching and put that in your devotional. Your devotion should be this. David Wilkinson, seven-minute preaching, turn on some worship, worship God for a few minutes, hit some psalms, go to the New Testament, and then talk to God. And minister to his heart, Lord, I thank you for being God over my life. I thank you for my salvation. I thank you, Lord, that when the devil came for me, death, you rebuked death. Lord, I thank you for all the good things you've done. I mean, I, I thank God today. I got a pair of cheap glasses I couldn't buy for the commission of the blind. I'm still thanking God for the reject. I mean, I can see people in the moon. I'm thinking just all messed up. I was thanking God for those glasses. I thank God for everything that I, he given me. I thank God for the, for the full stamp. I thank, even today, I have one of the best apartments in New York City. I think and it's, my apartment is about $4,000, $4,500 a month, right? And God gave me that apartment. And the thing supernatural, I fell into this thing called 80-20 program in the city. Uh, and I live, in, I live in the dorm. I'm like the Puerto Rican Jefferson. I live in, I live in the Upper East Side, <laughs> right? And, and I, I live in an apartment. The windows are bigger than those doors. Corner apartment, you can see the whole city on the 22nd floor. All I paid, $548. Out of my pocket. I lived there for 22 years. And the first time I moved in there 22 years, before, 22 years ago, I was paying $365. And the, and, the, and the state paid the rest. And because of the favor of God, he moved me out of the Bronx, moved me in there. I had no furniture. I had nothing. I had air mattress. I bought my brother's TV. When Dallas Cowboys lost, he wanted the TV back. <laughs> and that was kind of all the time. He was a cardinal Christian. <laughs> and, and through all that, I thank God for the air mattress. Even today, 22 years later, I'm still thinking things that God gave me and done for me. The smallest, the middle, the big one, and the extra large one. I'm still thinking of because I am thankful I am grateful that he brought me through. Even when the devil came for me, he brought me through. Even when I was blind, I could still see Jesus. Even David Wilkinson, when I walked him home one night, I, was, I joined the security ministry. I walked him home the first night. I walked him home the first night I walked Wilkinson. He was asking me all kind of questions. I was so nervous walking with him. And he asked me, well, I, when I got to the door of his, of his building, I thought he was going to say goodbye, good night, see you in church, whatever. He said, I see Jesus Christ in you. What a compliment that you don't have to say nothing about yourself. And people say, I see Jesus in you. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so think about it. So, so man in the mirrors, what reflection do you see when you see yourself in the mirror? Do you see your carnal ways, your carnal self, your carnal mindset, your carnal thinking, your carnal talk? Do you see the carnal kind of social media that you make pack with, that you sit down? And, let me ask you a question. Are you sitting on a table tonight that Jesus will come in and flip over? Are you sitting in a table tonight, this table of social media, table of pornography, table of Netflix, that the devil has stolen your time? You spend more time with the devil, you spend more time at his table than the Lord's table. Check yourself. My wife said to me not too long ago, she said, oh, you should give up that apartment in New York City. I said, I'm going to give you up. <laughs> give you up.
God bless me with something, I'm going to throw it away. Whatever God gives you, cherish it, bless it, celebrate it, and be grateful and thankful that he looked your way and gave you something. You with me? I'm, I tell my wife, you, I tell my wife, you need me, you need me to cast that devil out of you. <laughs> God, God gives you, you can stay at a hotel when you get to when you go to New York. I might like, get behind me, Saint Peter. <laughs> let me let me tell you about. Uh, I'm 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 cha- I'm I'm gonna become a worshiper, <laughs> and I'm gonna write a new song. Love is a battlefield. <laughs> make that a <laughs> make that a Christian song. She's not here, so I can I can try I can trash talk. That's my kind of Christianity talking. Get behind me. L- listen, let me let me let me say something to you. Check out the story, Noah. I want you to check this out. Then we do an altar call. I just want you to check this story out. We know the flood came. Noah was right and the people were wrong. With me? When, when, when the flood came, we know the story. This is the part I want you to get. I want you to get. The dove represents the Holy Spirit. You with me? The dove represents the Holy Spirit. I want you to get this story. Remember, the Holy Spirit came and fell on Jesus, right? Yes. Right? The Bible said the, the, so the dove fell on him. The Holy Spirit fell upon Jesus when he came out to baptism. And he was going to the wilderness. The Holy Spirit fell upon Jesus. Right? And I want you to catch this. The, the waters resided, nor sent the dove out. Yeah? And the dove came back to the ark. What would, the, what would it come back to the ark? What did the dove come back to the ark? Several times. Why? I'm going to tell you why. God, when God showed me this, I was shocked. I was like, I was blown away. See, the dove can't land. On dead flesh. The dove has to land on something that is alive. That's why the dove, the dove was able to land on Jesus because he was he had no dead flesh in him. The dove can't land something that is dead in your life. That it's unsurrendered to the will of God. The dove can't land on corpse. What is dead in your life? What is your areas in your life that the dove can't land, that is unsurrendered areas that the devil has legal rights? And you walk around with a, you walk around in a Christianity, you walk around in a Christian in a relationship with God that you have unsurrendered areas in your life, and the dove can't land, the Holy Spirit can't land because the devil owns those legal rights, and you have not renounced them, and you have made peace with the devils in those areas of life, and now the dove can't land completely and fully on you because there's dead corpse, the dead flesh, and there's a stink in the nostrils of God. It is a stink. It is a stink, and when we have when we have dead areas in our lives, you know what the God calls them? Those are the Ishmael areas in your life because you haven't given them your Isaac. It's okay. I'm preaching to myself. That's okay. That's the stuff that makes me grow. The stuff that challenges me. I don't want to be no. I don't want to be no deformed Christian. And I'm sure I'm, I've been Christian for 22 years. I remember when I went when I was uh, a young Christian. These jokers want to be. They, they, they was afraid to hang out with me. It, that's why I love my inner circle. My inner circle right here. I love my inner circle. My inner circle right here. I love my inner circle. You know why I love my inner circle? Because when I first became a Christian, Christian didn't want to hang out with me. It took a year and a half before they started to hang out with me. Because they didn't, they didn't trust me. They thought I was a double agent. So when they had like, when they had like Christmas, when they had uh, celebration, they didn't invite me. When they had, uh, you know, how do they call that, fellowships, they didn't invite me. One time they invited me one time. They said, hey, we're going to go return some tuxedos. You want to come with us? And I was like, come on, I'm not stupid. If you were returning tuxedos, that means it must, it must have been a wedding before the night before. So why you invite me to the wedding? Why you invited me to return a tuxedo, but you didn't invite me to the wedding? You see? And it took a year and a half before they took me out to some chicken wings. <laughs> so now God gave me the inner circle, and that's my gang. That's my clique. That's, those are my homeboys <laughs> and my homegirls. My inner circle, my inner circle is on fire because they're God's preparing them to be a remnant for the end times. Because God's not looking for pimp preachers with pimp suits and alligator shoes. 
God's looking for people that the devil can't see and the devil know who they are because they're like the Davids in the cave, the 400. They have no name, but they know how to fight. And God's not looking for people that got escalate and PhDs and all that. God, God's looking for people that are radical, unmovable, unshakable, and it's crazy. They're willing to step out the boat and take it to the, bring it to the devil. That's what God is looking for, radical people. God, God, God is looking for people that, you know, they, 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 they know how to drop it when it's hot. They know how to confront the devil. Because <laughs> at church today, we talk about the devil, but no one confronts. You have all these preachers talking about the devil, but no one confronts the devil because they got peace with the devil. They got, they got packed with the devil. I don't talk about the devil. I confront the devil. Everywhere I go, I say, witches, you want to come to the meeting? I pay for your ticket. I pay for your ticket. I give you box seats. I sit you right there. I went one time to Pattern University up in, uh, in New Jersey. I bought tower cars. I said, hey, witches, do your thing. I'll give you five minutes because then I go up. There wasn't, there wasn't an audience. They didn't come up. All right, eat that lunch. I went to a Botanica one time where the guy was filming one of, one of these um, filming documentaries with me. We went in there. To the, in the, you know how much the Botanica place, you know how much money they make a year? $3 million a year selling witchcraft stuff. $3 million a year selling witchcraft. I went in there with the whole film crew. I said, what's up with the whole film crew? Expose everything. And the guy with the camera, he said, oh, you think we should be here? <laughs> I said, what's wrong with you? You scared? No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he opened door. The devil ate his lunch, ate his, ate his Twinkies. The devil ate him up. He lost everything for eight months. God, God put judgment on him for, for, for shrinking back. And then he called me like a year later. Hey, I want to do another documentary. I said, sure, I'm going to do another documentary with you, stupid. I said, I'm going to do a documentary with Gilligan before I do something with you. You, 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 you walk into the, we walk into the most craziest witchcraft store that make $3 million a year, and I'm up in there, you know, showing them what's up, and, and I'm over there, I'm already, you know, confronting them and, and exposing, and all, you see all these people that do the tower card, they were up on the wall, there were about three or four of them on the tower card, they were looking at me like, like you could see the devil in their eyes, and I was like, shut up. I said, this piece of crap up here, this is what it is, this is what it is. I exposed everything, <laughs> everything. And he was, uh, he was like with the camera, like shaking and baking with the camera. And he said, you think, and I, my, and my, you know what's crazy? I went in there. They had my book in there for $14.99. My book was in there for $14.99 with the rest of the other witch wife book. I said, praise the Lord. And I said, this is confirmation that God wants me to come in here. Think about it. Confirmation. So, my last question to you. What table are you sitting in that God will flip over? That's a prepaid. Turn that crap off. <laughs> Sounds like an Android. <laughs> Don't sound like no iPhone. <laughs> Don't bring it. They're going to bring a fake phone to church. <laughs> what is dead in your life that the Holy Spirit haven't landed on it? Holy Spirit doesn't believe in dead things, corpse, fl dead flesh. Where is, it, where is it in your area that you're spiritually dead? That the devil has legal rights. Because God can send a dove, but if you, if you don't renounce, you don't renounce. You don't cut ties. You know, I can go anywhere, and I don't, I said, <laughs> don't make me get it. I know that's not an iPhone either. That's an iPhone? Yeah? That might be like a six. <laughs> Come out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Sound like the ice cream truck to me. <laughs> so ask yourself, seriously speaking, ask yourself the question, why is it that the Holy Spirit haven't touched this area in my life? If the Holy Spirit in the New Testament landed on Jesus with no problem, no complaint, no nothing, 
landed on him because he was 100%. We know he was God, 100%. He was man. And landed on him with no hesitation. What is it in your area, in your life, that you need Holy Spirit to land? If, if, whatever it is, whatever area in your life that smells like death flesh to the Lord, and the Holy Spirit can't touch it because you haven't surrendered that area to, your, to God. What struggle, what demonic activity in your life, what compromise? You know that the devil has, this is the game of the devil, and I share this one thing with you. The devil knows how to bring something in your life called struggles. You with me so far? The devil bring a struggle in your life. Struggle could be, say for example, I'm gonna turn on pornography. I don't do pornography. Even when I was in the, when I was in the world, I didn't do pornography. If I can't take it home, I don't want it. <laughs> I wasn't stupid. I wasn't gonna go there. You dance on the pole, and I give you my money. Get out of here. <laughs> if you can't come home and drop it like it's hot, you can <laughs> dance in the pole you want. <laughs> Just me thinking. Uh, that okay? I'm keeping it real. So I was, into, I was into pornography, I was into all that stuff. I, I, didn't, I just didn't entertain that stuff, but I'm just saying how the devil works. Because today, 70% of leadership is in pornography in the church. 70% of the pastors are freaky Julio, freaky Freddy, in pornography. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. This is the struggle. This is what the devil does to Christians. This is what the devil does to young people. This is what the devil does. He'll give you a struggle. The struggle is, okay, I, I can just turn it on today and I watch it for a little and then I feel convicted and I turn it off. And then, you know what, I'm going to do it tomorrow, but I do it next week and I turn it back on again. Now, next week, I turn it back on again and I'm watching it. And I feel some conviction. I feel Holy Spirit convicting me. I feel, I feel shameful. I feel bad that I'm doing it. But I can turn it off again. That's the struggle. See, if you don't deal with that struggle right then and then, it turns into a stronghold. And the stronghold will be now I own a membership. I own one membership that I can watch, you know, I, I can watch uh, Crazy Wanda. I own one membership now. Now I'm in a, now I have, now it's not a struggle anymore. Now I signed up for a stronghold. Now I watch it once in a while. But now that website, it, it gotten kind of boring. Same thing. They don't have new movies. So I turn around, I go, I go get me three membership somewhere else. Now I got bondage. Now the devil has you spiritually incarcerated. That's why and this, this is what the devil does. that's one system the devil does. The other system the devil does, right? I'm married, see? Right? My wife is 80%. My wife will never be 100%. No one is perfect. My wife is 80. I can live with the 80. You see? But the devil bring a hoochie that's 20%. Are you missing it? The devil bring a hoochie 20%. So the 20%, maybe my, my wife don't dress up a certain way. My wife is hot, no matter how she dress. But she's a hot Asian. I love Asians. They don't get no wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife looked like she, the day I was in a plane with her, and the lady turns over to me and says, is that your daughter? I'm about to throw off the plane. <laughs> that mean, me, me, it just, because, you know. See my wife right there. She was in New York. She, I had to cast a demon out of her because she couldn't handle, she can't handle New York. <laughs> she, can, she can't handle New York. She think New York, she said, she went to New York, she said, oh, no, I love California now. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't handle New York. In fact, I was driving. In New, uh, California people, I, I, your people too crazy. People cross the street, you got to wait for them to cross the street. <laughs> and it, and it, I was driving in New York, my wife said, oh, my God, you're going to kill that person. I said, they better get out of the way. <laughs> and, and she was like, you, why do you, why you drive that way? I said, but that's the way we drive here. And uh, you blow, blow the horn, get him out the way. And then the ambulance come, woo over here, everybody move to the, to the right. Everybody move out of the way when the ambulance is coming. Over there in New York, we don't care, we're in traffic, get out of here. <laughs> I was here first. <laughs> the guy in the back is dying. <laughs> I was here first. I, I don't care about the horn. I ain't moving out the way. I got to get somewhere. 
I love New York. <laughs> and we got the best pizza. Kids, you know. So the 80 never has a system. It's called the 80-20 program. So now you chase the 20 when you had the 80 home. But the devil magnified the 20 to make it look better than the 80 you got at home. And that's a lot of, we have 70% of Christian divorces. See, people don't want to hear the truth. People just want to hear, you know, lullaby, color me happy. My name is Joe Osteen. I like Joe. <laughs> I really do. I like Joe. Because I, I, I respect Joe for two reasons. He's good for young Christian, baby Christians. And he takes his money. And he buys stuff from out of his own money, not out of church money. So, you know. So, listen to this last part. This is the last part I want you to get. You with me? You can't be preaching. You get distracted. They had to go. The devil didn't want them here. That's the way it works. This is, I want you to catch this, catch this last part here. Component cycles of repeat. That's why we got cycles of repeat in our, in our, in our walk. Cycles and ripers of repeat is because you never cut the situation at the root. You cut the branches, but you never cut it at the root. And when you don't deal the root, when you don't deal with spiritual warfare, root issues, that same devil come back and fight you again. And that's why, that's why I wrote that book, Conquering Your Deliverance. I wrote that book. And basically, conquering your deliverance, it's not, the Bible says we're more than conquerors. You, am I right or wrong? Right? So how could you be more than conqueror and you, got, you find that devil six months later? How could you be more than conquering that same devil fighting you again six months later? You, you thought you beat. You come up and, I want to testify. I got delivered from chewing bubble gum. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. And then next, next, three weeks from now, you got a bazooka in your mouth. <laughs> I'm showing you something. I'm showing you something. It, 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 this is how the devil works. We, that's why Joseph was awesome. And I'll leave you with this last message. Joseph was off the hook. Joseph knew how to conquer his victory. Because Joseph, listen to this. Joseph had crazy, we know we got crazy family. Some of you got crazy family. Right? Come on, don't leave me out there. <laughs> you got crazy family. You're like, Psh, I don't trust my father. I can throw him. <laughs> we got crazy family. Right? I got, I got crazy family. I got when I get to heaven, Jesus, why was I born in this family? <laughs> crazy, right? This is the way Joseph, the brothers betrayed him. Joseph became second in command in Egypt. He met his brothers again, right? And this is the cool part about Joseph. Joseph met his brother. He could have killed them. He could have got the Uzi. He could have he got the nine millimeter and took them all out. But this is what Joseph did. Joseph said to them, boy, the devil met for evil. God turned around for good. Now, listen what Joseph did. Joseph forgave, forgave. He said, I forgive you for what you did to me. Now, this is, this is how you conquer, though. This is how you conquer. Listen to this part. This is how you conquer. When Joseph met Jacob, never told Jacob what the brother did to him. You with me? He never told his dad. These crazy brothers, that's what I was missing for 13 years. You know why I was missing 13 years? Let me tell you what these dudes did. He conquered unforgiveness. We don't conquer nothing because we're still talking about it. So I mean, that I mean, the devil still got legal rights over someone that damaged you, someone that raped you, someone that molested you. And, it's, and listen, not making it light that you've been in that you've been in that situation, but it's time to let it go. It's time to cut the rope. It's time to bury that situation once and for all. It's time to cross over your rest seat moment and get your victory. It's time that you cross over. It's time that when a threat hits your house, you still glorify Jesus Christ. It is time to do that. It is time to say, Lord, no matter what comes my way, no matter what hits me, no matter what circumstance, no matter what situation, I will still stand and give you glory. I lost my eyesight. I went to, I was in an airport with 2080. You know what 2080 is? You see the big E and the other letter. That's it you see. Everything else is blurred. I got, a, I got, I got on the plane with 2080 eyesight to go to Glendale, okay? Listen, I sat on the plane, JFK, five-hour snowstorm. 
okay? After five hours, they cleared the plane, and we took off to California from New York City. Five more hours. And all I saw was, the only way I was able to, I saw this close. Everything else is blurred. Complete blur. And I still went to California and cast out. I, they had to pick me up at the airport because I couldn't find the app from that uh, Lyft crap. I think Lyft are terrorists. A bunch of Mohammeds in there. <laughs> at least the ones in New York. <laughs> I, I couldn't find the app because I, my eyes couldn't see. They had to pick me up at the airport, take me to the, take me to the hotel, and pick me up and take me to the place. And I cast out more devils that day with 2080. Because I promised God that I would do more for him if he leaves and put him back in my body. And I've written books. I've done e-courses. And I just wrote a book. It's called, uh, it's called uh, Spiritual Warfare. Pra it's called Spiritual Warfare. Pra it's called uh, uh, Fire Prayers. Uh, building building uh, Fire Prayers. Uh, destroying Satanic Kingdoms. It's coming out next year. I did that. I did e-course. I fly everywhere. Every time I leave, my wife cries. I think she just cried for joy because I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's, oh, God, he's leaving. Thank God. I'm glad he's leaving. You see my wife. She got an easy marriage. I never home. I never home. She's at the mall. <laughs> but I want you to catch this. Come up and ask yourself, what is dead in my life? What is cycles of repeat in my life? What stronghold the devil got? What bondage I have? What, what struggles I have? Because you know what? Listen, Psalms 91 speaks about the young lion, the four traps of the enemy. The father in Psalms 91 is the devil. You know that, right? Psalms 91, the father is the devil. The small lion is the thing that you, the, the sin that you think you can control because it's little. And before you know it, whatever is little, eventually it will grow. Whatever is little, eventually it will grow. It's time to deal with your situation. It's time to deal with situations in your life. That if Jesus were to walk in here today and he said, what are you saying making heaven, would it be you? If you, the Bible says, listen, this is a kind of Christian. A kind of Christian is the book of Revelation when God said you lukewarm and spit you back out. That is the kind of Christian that God is talking about. The 10 virgin, the 5, the 50%, the 5, well, carnal. They, 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 and they, when they woke up from the storm, they said, give me some of what you got. Because they didn't have enough to get to the wedding. Because they were carnal. The carnal Christian is the one. It's the lukewarm Christian that got compromises. And the devil has stolen your time because you spend more time with the one-eyed monster in your house. The television. You spend more, more, you spend more time in social media. You know all the quotes, you know all the social media influences, you know all these things, but you don't know God. And the man preached with his eloquent voice, and he quoted Psalms and he, he knew the words, but he didn't know the God of the words. Who are you today in your life? Because God, God is saying to you today, could I trust you where I'm taking you? But we got to fix things. We got to have fixed things. You're going to have to give up some things. You're going to have to surrender things. You're going to have to cut the rope on some things. And you're going to have to get back to God's presence because you don't know the presence of God anymore. You don't, even have, you, don't even have, you don't even have a prayer closet because you spend more time in your phone than you spend with God. So how is it that you make God jealous with your social media when social media hates God, the antichrist people? It's an antichrist system ramping in the world today. If you, you could talk about Muhammad, you could talk about Buddha, you could talk about, you could talk about any new age crap, and no one says nothing. But if you bring, them, you bring up the name of Jesus, the world manifests. Everybody go crazy. You bring up Jesus anywhere, what are you talking about Jesus? Buddha, hey, hey. You talking about, oh, I'm going to stretch, I'm going to do yoga, stretch. I just stretch, you heard a bone crack, right? When you talk about these things that have a form of godliness, no one say nothing. But when you mention his name, people get uncomfortable. People manifest. People start cursing you out. Because there's something about that name. Something about that name. Something about that name. 
I get in the elevator where I live at. I live on the 22nd floor. You get the people come in. They're like, oh, this is uh, global warming. You know how many times they crush me out? I didn't wear no mask. They said, well, you're not wearing masks. I said, God gave me an immune system. It works. Oh, you go, you're gonna, you, you got COVID-19. You're going to get us sick. And I, I'm like, let me ask you a question. You wear the mask, right? They're like, yeah, we wear the mask. We want to be safe. I said, so how do you drink water? And how do you, you eat your burger? So COVID-19 is not going to grab it when you're eating your burger and your water. The COVID-19 is going to stop say, okay, I'm going to give you a break. Put the mask down. Eat your chips. Put the mask on, and the fight is on. I mean, people curse you out. I mean, New York, I had an 80-year-old lady say, Are you mother this, you mother that. She was cursing me. 80 years old. She was cursing me out and had a mask. I was 10 feet away from this old hag. I told her, stop cursing me out. You're going to die next week anyway. You're 80. Then I, then I, I, re, then I repented. <laughs> I got a car in a moment. <laughs> in restaurants in New York City, it go, because you see, the devil knows how to play your mind. In restaurants in New York City, listen, restaurant in New York City, the guy, my friend had a restaurant. She's paying $20,000 a month for rent. Then she had to build something right next door, sixty thousand dollars to build this miniature restaurant. That COVID nineteen will not go there, <laughs> but COVID nineteen will go to the to the other restaurant because the devil knows how to brainwash people and make them believe something that is uh, it's called false realities. And the false reality is something that seems real, something that seems real, but behind it, false. Of facts of reality that seem real. Yes, people die from COVID-19. Cuomo killed 15,000 old people. Why he's not in jail? Why people say I took the booster, I took this shot, I took that shot, and people still got COVID-19. I mean, I just want you to wake up because COVID-19, these systems are leading to the mark of the beast. It's adopting. It's a system to adopt you, to make you normal, to fit in, to be comfortable, to be mediocre. So when the mark comes, you'll take it. And man, that is the last test for the believer. You take that mark, you not go. I don't care how much you cry, you're not going to heaven. That is a setup. One world order, Illuminati, Freemason. They're setting up the stage. The Rockefellers, the Bill Gates, the Soros. They're setting up the gate for the church. The mark of the beast is not for the world; it's for us. The mark of the beast is it's like the COVID-19. It was a preview of the movie to come. You don't want that's COVID-19? Oh, just in case. <laughs> it's a preview for things to come. It's a preview of the movie. You don't have the mask, you can't come here and buy. You don't have the mask, you can't walk into my place. You don't have the mask. Now, idiot, you don't have a restaurant. Because no one stood up and fought the good fight. I went everywhere without the mask. I preached. I laid hands on people. I was still, I was still going to churches. On, it was like the underground church in China, something like that. Going to churches and still preaching the gospel and praying for people. I never closed down. I never closed down. Because you see, the church age died, but the kingdom church came alive when the church age died. I went, I went to the doctors. I had, every year I, I get a physical, and my, and my doctor told me, you got, you, get, you got COVID. You had COVID before. I said, really? When? He said, you did. It shows here. I said, really? I ain't feel nothing. He said, yeah, your, your immune system was so high. I said, of course. I said, anointing. And there's people who got COVID. 19 people die. And my heart goes out to family that lost people. But there's people die of heart attacks. There's people die of cancer. There's people die of other things. I'm just saying, don't let the world and don't let the system of the world to put you in a box and to define you when Christ has made you and paid price for you. Fear not. Worry not. God has your tomorrow. He's already there. I'm not worried about tomorrow. He's there. I remember when the COVID-19 closed down, when, when the churches closed down, I said, where am I going to go preach? Where am I going to go do something for the Lord? How am I ministry is going to be supported? How am I going to write new books and all this stuff? I was saying to myself, and God said, don't you trust me? I give you the ministry. 
and, and, and a couple of days later, someone sent me a check. I, I mean, I told my big check. I called the person. I think you made a typo. I said, I think you you were supposed to put uh, three. Uh, you supposed to put like two zeros, like three and two zero, and it was a whole bunch of zeros. And I told the person, you made a typo. You know, she said, no, the Lord told me to give you that. She said, Nike pay me in advance, one hundred fifty thousand. The person that told me, the devil paid me one hundred fifty thousand. God says, send your money from the devil. And that money, <laughs> that money broke the spirit of poverty in my in my. In, in, in the ministry. Nothing missing, nothing broken when you're laying on him for all your understanding. Trust on him. Altar core is simple. People, you sitting here, let's be realistic, let's be honest. Let's look at the man in the mirror. If God were to see the mirror, will he see you or he see himself in you? Proverbs in Malachi, when God's talking about the refining fire, he's taking the broth off the fire, and he looks down. It's about, he looks down when he takes the broth off the go, is to see himself in you. In the cross, Jesus saw you. At the cross, he saw you. And now, God doesn't want to see you. He wants to see Jesus in you. So I'm asking you, today, today, right now, at this very moment, in the state that you are now, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't raise your hand, don't be ashamed. Hell is full of people that wish they could be sitting here and had a chance to repent. Because if you, listen, I preach this message. It's called Testimonies in Hell. I preach this message. And they all have the same testimony. Hitler, all these people in hell throughout time, that's in hell today. Judas, all these people in hell, they all have the same testimony in hell. I preach a message called Testimonies in Hell, and they all have the same message. And the message that they had in hell, the same testimony that they would love to hear the word repent one more time. When I went to hell, it's a forever place. When I went to hell, I left my body and I died in my apartment. When I went to hell, hell, it, when I got to hell, when I got, I, I'll tell you tomorrow, but I just want to say this one moment. When I stepped in the ground in hell, it felt like I was stepping on marshmallow and it breathes like a human person. It goes, whoosh, every time you step on it. And you feel the fear in hell is nothing compared to the, tor the torment in hell, nothing compared to the fear here. It wraps around you like a person. You feel like a person is on you. And you feel this tormenting thing comes on you on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. That's what, in hell. I went through that in hell. And as I walk into the portals of hell, all you hear is the ground breathes. Every time you step on it, you feel like you're stepping on a person. But the ground breathes. When, when it breathes, you feel the demonic coming out of it. And incarcerates you. It torments you. It's the absence of God. Heaven is the presence of God. So my question to you, simple, today. If you were to die today, would you make heaven? Because you can't, there's no purgatory here. You can't die and you're going to go have a pina colada. They're going to wipe you clean and you're going to go to heaven. The Catholic system, not the Catholic people, they're liars. Because the guy on the cross didn't go to purgatory. He went to paradise. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Okay. And if you're a Jehovah Witness, you're in trouble. You can knock all the doors you want. You can go to Home Depot knocking all the doors you want. You're not going to earn your salvation that way. Because the thief of the cross couldn't get off and knock on doors and work for his salvation. He may acknowledge the guy in the middle and say, he acknowledged Christ, the son of the living God in the middle. And he said, remember me. Then he repented from his sins. He said, remember me. And today the Lord said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Because you can't get that close to the cross and not get saved. The guy that helped Jesus carry the cross you can't get that cross to the cross and get saved. Because there's something about Jesus. Listen, I preached my brother's funeral. My brother was transvestite. He just dressed like a woman. I preached his funeral. My brother was transvestite. He was homosexual, bisexual. He was a witch doctor, bigger than me. And he was, and he was married to a regular woman. And my brother died as a Christian a week, a week before his birthday. And I preached his, I preached his funeral. And all the people came. I tell my crazy people. I tell my brother made Sodom and Gomorrah look like kindergarten. Yeah, all the people came because my brother was going to throw a party, a Christian party. They didn't know he was Christian at the time. 
And my brother used to throw a cocaine party that would last three days in his house. Cocaine all over the place. I'm throwing powder cocaine. And people would get high and stay in his house for three days, high, partying. And my brother caught a heart attack. And he had heart surgery. And I went to the hospital to preach the gospel to him. And he went crazy in the hospital. Get out of my room. Get out of my room. And I said, I'm not getting around until you hear the good news. Because in case you die, you will make heaven. And my brother broke down and wept like a baby on his wife. And I preached the gospel. And he got saved. And listen to this part. This is the part I want you to listen to. My brother got saved. My brother got baptized filled with the Holy Spirit. So that's why if you tell me homosexual, you were born that way, that's a lie. You just got raped or molested. And not, and not making light of this situation. Someone, someone did something to you that turned you around. So because my brother went through all that situation. And bottom line, my brother, a week before his birthday, he went home with Jesus. And he, he was telling me he was going to have a, a Christian party with all the crazy people. I mean, he had people look like women. They, were, they can bench press you. I mean, they look like they look like football players. I don't even know if it was a woman or man. I mean, crazy people he had. He had no normal people in his party. And my brother, you know, my brother never did the party because he went home a week before his birthday. But we had the party in the funeral because I did the party. I was the DJ, baby. I did my brother's party. All the people came. Twenty people. I mean, the whole seat was full of people. I don't know. Who, I looked. I said, "Is that a man or woman?" And then you had guys. I'm, I'm talking about like. I mean, we have, I mean, guys, that was, <laughs> and you had girls with haircuts, I like, and you had lipstick dykes, and you had butchers, and you had all kind, you had everybody was in there. I mean, it was a freak show, a freak show of people, but I preach John 6, 3, 16. I ain't preach you going to hell, or you dyke, or you're homosexual, God hates you. I ain't preach none of that. I preach the love of Jesus Christ, because I already know you're going to hell. So my job, my, I already know you're going there. So my thing is to turn your car around. I already know you're going to hell. And I preach the love of Jesus. And I preach fire and brimstone. Not compromising, not sugarcoating. I preach. And after I finish preaching, 18 of those people that were sitting there, that I, we don't know the story. They were raped, molested. We don't know what they've been through. God knows. They raised their hand, tears. Say, I want that Jesus. Because God loves the misfit. And my brother won 18 people to Jesus Christ that day. My brother's right behind me. And he wasn't even there. There was a corpse. There was a, he was right behind me going, go, John. Woo, 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 woo. And I was preaching. I won 18 souls for my brother that day. And I preached my, my sister funeral, 29 years old, last 2021. And my mom had to bring this stupid priest in here because they buried my sister at some Catholic cemetery. That's one of the decent cemeteries in the Bronx. And they brought a priest. I said, well, you preach first, I told them, because I had to clean up your mess. <laughs> he preached retarded. He preached retarded stuff. And I got up, and when he laughed, I said, I told people, don't believe his stuff. He lied. <laughs> Preaching about, you're going to feel my sister in a couple of days. You're going to feel her, you're going to feel her around you. Stupid. We, 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 are you crazy? Don't you read the Bible? The Bible says absent from the body, present in the Lord. My sister says, no, no, you're going to feel, you're going to feel my sister. You're going to feel, you might feel COVID-19, but you're not going to feel my sister. My sister, I, I, I won my sister for Jesus. And my sister's home went in heaven, and I didn't say goodbye to her. I said, I'll see you later. I preach. I say, I clean the mess of that priest. You know what I'm preaching. Stupidity. Form of godliness, but not the truth. Because the truth will set you free. Homosexual, free. Bisexual, free. Drug dealers came, free. Because the gospel is for all people. God don't show no favoritism. Because in the church, we sick people. The church is ICU. All the sick people come. Look at She's blowing her nose. I told you. <laughs> Bottom line is this, man. Do you know Jesus? Not know of him. Not know him on Sunday. Don't be a pocketbook on a Sunday. Do you know, are you, know, you know of him or you know him? I don't know about you, but if I don't read my Bible in two days, I start getting like, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm I need, when I don't read my Bible in two days, I feel like I'm jittery. I feel like uh, I need a fix. You know, I feel, and when I read it, after I read it, I feel like, oh feel better than making love to my wife. Amen? You with me? 
That's how it feels when, I, when, you, when you sit and talk with him, when you sit and you walk with him, when you sit and build your relationship with him, when you sit and he loves you and you love him. And when you sit, he knows that he's writing your story because he's holding the pen of your story. When I leave, hell will rejoice. I left the battlefield. And I will leave. I made Jesus Christ proud that he picked me. That should be your story. That should be your story. That should be your story. That I made him proud that he picked me. Because I should have been in jail. I should have been in a cemetery. I was a drug dealer. I was a drug addict. I should have been locked up. And mercy and grace came and kissed me. Amen. Knew your address. Knew where you were at and came for you. When no one loved you, he came for you. He loved you. When people hated you and betray you and, and think nothing of you, God thought everything of you. A misfit, a drunk dad, my mom's getting beat up, welfare, full stamp. And today I, I know people all over the world. Even the underground church sent me a message on Instagram, on, on Facebook. When I lost my eyesight, some Asian girl in China, in Shanghai, said, John, how's your eyesight? I said, it's getting better. I said, who are you? She said to me, well, I'm, I live in Shanghai. I said, I've never been there, preach. She said, but the underground church, we got 1.4 billion Chinese people praying for you because we love you. Because we know your story. <laughs> a kid from the South Bronx. The father my father took me was a car wash. But Jesus has taken me everywhere. Japan. I preached in Japan. I prayed for a little girl that was bullied. 12 years old. She had trauma. They took her out of school. She didn't speak for eight months. Because the trauma, they bully her. I lay hands on her and I pray for her. And the eighth day, the last night I was leaving, I laid hands and said, Lord, the devil is going to let her, let her go. And I prayed. That little girl bust out crying. And she cried for two hours on the floor and started to speak again. Because God is real. Come on, people. God is real. I went, I went, I went to Germany. I preached in Germany. It took me up in the mountain. This thing was like. 2,000 feet, you can see Austria from there. The little South Bronx kid standing on a mountain, on, a, on, on this top of this mountain where Hitler used to do the witchcraft over Germany. I was standing there for Jesus Christ. And I broke the witchcraft over Germany, invited the Holy Spirit back. And a week later, they caught one of the Hitler's generals, 95 years old. They caught him in the States because witchcraft was broken. And they gave me a book. They gave, they, they, this couple came. They gave me a book. There was like this orange book that said Hell of Hitler on it, right? And, I, and, and the devil said, keep it. Put it on eBay. You make money. The devil is a liar. Put it on eBay. Make money. And I burned it. You know, I went to the Holocaust Museum. I went to the Holocaust Museum in Germany to see the Holocaust Museum in Germany. And the same book was there around thick glass. And I had the same book in my hand. I had the same book in my hand. In my hand. I would have sold that book for millions of dollars. But that's the devil is alive. I burned that devil. I burned that thing like no tomorrow. I burned the witchcraft over Germany. I've been in Germany. I've been in Japan. I, I preach. I preach. Two years ago, I preached across the street from Buckingham Palace in one of the most historic buildings. It was over 100 years old. I preached the gospel there right across the street from Big Ben and, 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 and Buckingham Palace. A thousand people came. The kid from the South Bronx. That his father took me. The father's I went with the car wash in Yankee Stadium, $1.50, box seats. Not box seat, bleachers. By the time you got up there, the seventh inning. That's how far that thing was. <laughs> I sat under the pretzel lights. I got tan. For $1.50, I, I got a tan. And you couldn't see the players. That thing was so high. By the time you got up there, you pay $1.50 in your own Yankee Stadium. And I went up, my mom had my mom's my hero. I went up there, I went up there. By the time I got there, it was the seventh inning. That's how long it took to get up there. And look what God has done. Because God took my name, my filthy name, my filthy last name, and God took it and washed it in the blood and brought it back out. He said, I can take a reject. I can take a misfit. I am the donkey that was tied up somewhere and had no recognition, had no, 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 I had no identity. I had nothing. I was broken. I was fragmented. I was a kid that was beat up, brought into witchcraft from the age of 8 to the age of 35. And See my mom get black eyes every weekend because my father was a drunk. I, I was a kid that was fragmented, going to breakfast for, in, to junior high, uh, in elementary, in, in elementary school because there was no breakfast in my house. 
I was the kid that was stand fragmented, bully in school. I was the kid that had nothing. And God said, get that donkey. The donkey that was tied up in the New Testament. That's my story. Go get him. The Lord said, I got need of him. And then donkey was tied up. No one knew of him. No one knew that donkey, but God knew the donkey, the condition, and the address. And he came for me in 1999. And when Jesus came for that donkey, and when Jesus, the donkey, the best story in the Bible is the donkey. The donkey was, the donkey had, the donkey was ghetto, by the way, in case you didn't know. The donkey was ghetto because when Jesus sat on his back and drove and the donkey became somebody. Because the master sat on his back. The donkey was like, woo woo, <laughs> down the parade, because he had him on his back. Now is your chance. If you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior, stand up, I pray for you. If you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I said, bring the demons down. Hold on to your demon. Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you stand up. So you stand up and say, Lord, I'm going to stand up because you say in the word, you say in the word, that if I deny you, if, if I deny you, you would deny me in front of the Father. You stand up and get Jesus in your life and give him back the pen. I don't care what family you're born to. That don't mean nothing to God what family you're born to. God can rewrite your story and make a masterpiece. God can rewrite your story and make, and write, and make a bestseller. Listen, I got a high school diploma. What the heck are you going to do with that? Toilet paper? High school diploma. I had ain't gym, ain't lunch. I was a master selling lunch ticket to the fat people in the cafeteria. They had to eat twice. I charged them double. And that's all I did. And look what God had done. I wrote nine books by the hand of the Holy Spirit. I just wrote a book now with charisma. They're so impressed. They said, how could you finish this early? I said, because God speaks to me. And I write stuff from the devil's camp. I don't write stuff because I heard it from, I write from the devil. This is how the devil works. This is pattern sacred. This is what the devil does. This is the trap of the devil. This is, the, this is what the devil does to Christians. This is, because I did the witchcraft to y'all. I did, I did the witchcraft to you when I was in the witchcraft. I know how to steal your mind. I know how to play you. I know how to put demon on you. I know how to put witchcraft on you. I know how to put blood spirits on you. I know how to put perversion spirits on you. I know how to put premature death spirit. I know how to steal your mind. I know how to put witchcraft on your mind so you can go crazy. I know how to put witchcraft on you so you can get operations that you didn't need so you can die on the operating table. I did all that. So I know how to break those things. I know how to break astral projecting devil. No one that astral project to my house. They know better. Astral project to my house. Brother, I cut the civil cord. I go to your funeral. You tell me how you want your flowers, baby. I know how to break astral projecting devils. I know how to break witchcraft. There's mantra components of witchcraft. I know how to do all that because I lived there for 25 years and I write it in my books. So Christians know how to fight the good fight. So you don't have to be a Christian that you're struggling. You don't have to be a Christian that, that you're surviving Christian. God didn't call you to survive. God called you to, God called you to be more than a conqueror. I know how to break witchcraft for all levels of witchcraft. Not because of me. Holy Spirit showed me. I know how the component. I know how the devil works. Pattern and sacred repeat. I know how the devil works. Pornography devil. Sexual morality devil. I know how homosexual. I know how the, all that stuff works. And I give you the recipe to beat that thing down like a piñata. I should project to my house. I separate you from the demon. The civil court is a contract that the person, the witch guy, has with the demon. So what I do is when I see you guys should project once, Foolish me. Second time, I'll send you flowers to your funeral. I separate you from the demon in the contract. You can't get back into your body. It's called spiritual warfare, baby. I pray for you later if you make it. I know how to separate because I know how to actually project. I actually project more than anybody else in, in the world. I drink more animal blood. I drink my own blood. Because the devil is a counterfeit. Because there's power in the blood. The real blood. The blood in Calvary that's still running. And making people whole. Making people heal, deliver, set free. No, nothing broken, nothing fragmented. He'll make your mind whole. Every tormenting devil has to die. Every demonic spirit has to die. Every demonic attack over your body has to die. Every sickness. I pray for a woman that was Muslim. She has six months to live. I lay hands on that devil. I, we curse that devil. We curse Islam. We curse the Quran. We curse her that she renounced. She got Holy Spirit touched her. She got healed. 
she be still today. She said, I bring more people to church than my pastor. She had less than six months to live because I know how to deal with premature deaf devils. Breaking contract, breaking legal rights, renunciations. That's why the witches hate me so much. That's why I get emails that they're trying to kill me and my daughter. They're trying to still get my daughter. And they say, we leave your daughter alone. My daughter gets tormented sometimes. My daughter sometimes calls me some, tells me, Dad, maybe I don't want to live anymore. That's how tormented she gets. And the devil said, if you stop preaching the gospel and you start exposing me, we will leave your daughter alone. I said, well, you know what? I see my daughter in heaven. But I will preach Jesus to the day I die. I ain't compromising. I'm, you know, one time a guy told me, he told me, come to my, he had 50, he had, I think, something like 500 churches. He said, I book you for the whole year, preaching all my churches. I book you for the whole year. He said, I just don't want you to do one thing, and I'll pay you top money. I said, what is it? Don't talk about the Holy Spirit. I said, well, you send your mother, send your mommy to preach over there. Don't need your money. I got riches in heaven. Nothing missing in my life. I take care of my mom. My mom is my hero. My mom is my hero. I take care of my daughter. I know I got nothing to my daughter. Crazy. I didn't know how to pray. I pray so good. I pray some boyfriend out of her life. They still can't find him. I ain't gonna marry no frog. My daughter ain't gonna marry no frog. Marry a boy ass. Marry someone like your daddy. Good looking, anointed, filled with the Holy Spirit, and love of Jesus. I ain't marry no carnal Christian or some guy that, you know, does the rosary or whatever. What do you do with that idiot? I prayed him quick. I could put my daughter on the phone. She's still upset over that. It happened like, it happened like, <laughs> and my daughter's 33 years old, intelligent, smart, and beautiful. And she said, Dad, you think God has a boy asking me? I said, of course he does. You're going to be 99 years old. He's coming. <laughs> Let's pray. Let's pray and believe God. But I want you to stand up for Jesus if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then I'll see you on Hallelujah Boulevard, right around the corner from the McDonald's and the Krispy Kreme. I'll see you there. Amen. Because there is a Krispy Kreme in heaven. There is a Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is going crazy. Now we got chicken wings in Chick-fil-A. Praise the Lord. God is good. And he's writing your story. I want to pray. After we pray, I want to do, I want to, tomorrow, if you're here, who's here, you're here tomorrow? I want to release, listen, October and December, it's witchcraft month. October, December, it's witchcraft month. I want to release a, a blessing upon you that the favor of God will rest upon you. For the years to come, when things are dark, you will prosper, you will shine, you will be a light, you'll be a lighthouse. That when things happen in your life, nothing will affect you. COVID-19 never affected me in any way. Because I carry the favor of God. The favor of God is the presence of God in your life. Not church. Not a Bible, as good as that is. Not a pastor. Not a leader. Not an evangelist. I carry the presence of God. Because I'm the tabernacle of the New Testament. I carry his presence. Everywhere I go, people manifest. Everywhere I go, people, people curse me out. Everywhere I go, I, the, the other, I pray for this girl. The other day, she spit me in my face. I pray for the girl. She, almost, she, she, she put a, a dent there. I get the letter. It's hell, hell, Satan. We hate you, John. I pray for this girl in Arizona. The demon told me I waited 20 years to confront you. I said, well, you're a patient demon. Got yeah, more patient than everybody, than Christians I know. Man, living for Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen for you. Living for Him. I don't care. I've been, I've been blind, completely blind. I got my, my, this book right here, it got my certificate of legal blindness in the back. I got this for New York State, certificate of legal blindness. They declare me blind. They say, You're blind, you never see again. So I went to the Commission of the Blind that was training me to do a night. Uh, I dog, to walk with an eye dog, how to walk with the dog, and the dog get friendly with me. I said, I don't want no stupid dog in my house. <laughs> we'll teach you how to do this with the cane and the big red ball. I don't want that stupid thing. But you're blind. I said, for now, I'll see you again. You'll see. 
They said, you're crazy. We're going to send you to therapy. You speak to a psychiatrist so you can come to your senses and accept your condition. So they got a therapist. You know what happened with the therapist? She got saved. Her daughter was a pole dancer. She got saved to the gospel. And then when, and the therapist, she would look forward. She would say, I can't wait till you get here so you can pray with me. I was doing therapy to her instead of her doing therapy to me. And today, I got awesome vision. And I don't, I don't have a Puerto Rican car. Praise the Lord. I got a white man's car. I got a white man's car. I got Bobby. <laughs> Let's pray. Let's raise your hands. Raise your hands. I mean, I surrender. Say, Lord Jesus, I come today. I give you my life. I give you back the pen. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Write my story that I will make you proud the day I close my eyes. Hell will rejoice. And Jesus Christ will be proud that I made him proud that he picked me. Lord, you say you love the misfit. You love the underdog. So write my story so the world will know that I was here. And when I leave, they will miss me. In Jesus' name, amen. That's right. Now, just one, I mean, we got time, right? You got time, right? You anybody got any demons you want to deal with? You got a demon, girl? You look like, you look like Willie Nelson. <laughs> Are you Willie Nelson's sister? You look like Willie Nelson's sister. Come over here. Well, bring your demons over here, girl. Bring them, bring them right here. Tell the demons get comfortable. Nice rug. Stay right there. Stay right there. Don't cry. Relax. I got you. Relax. I got you. It's a bad day for the devil. It's a good day for Jesus. Anybody here, you're struggling with something. You come up. Let's deal with it. Come up here. I go to the dentist. My mouth is clean. Man, I get free dentists. I went to the dentist in my hand. The guy told me, we fix your mouth, we charge $60,000. I said, hey, you ain't buying no new car with me in my mouth. I put it on Facebook. I got three dentists showed up and fixed my mouth for free. God favor, huh? That's right. I'm going to stand over here and turn this way. Come on, people. Any stronghold, any hindrance, any delay, any blockage, any distraction, any demonic activity in your life, any generational curses in your life, any, any besetting sin. You know what besetting sin? Things that come back and repeat itself in your life. You think you got rid of it, you got free from drinking, you got free from smoking weed, you got free from doing this, and then you back on again. You love Jesus Christ, you don't want to be in that situation, but it, I think overpowers you. You with me? It overpowers you. You don't want that to overpower you. You don't want that situation to incarcerate you. I want to be a free person. The only thing I got wrong with me, I got a little temper. Just a little bit. Like this. Just a little bit. It's not a Puerto Rican thing. It just it's Jesus is working it out. You with me? Strong character. That's what they call it in the Bible. Amen? Where's my, where's my homie at? over there? He can hold my iPad. Somebody bought me an iPad. I started, uh, after so many, I don't trust you, but you're Puerto Rican. You're Spanish, bro. You might run out. Indian, Indian. Indian that's even worse. It's even worse. Look at this guy looking at me. Stand over here. He might bite me from behind. <laughs> Get away. Listen. Whatever years you got left. You with me? Whatever years you got left. If you got 30, 40, 50 years, let it be the best years of your life. Let it be the best years of your life. I don't care what you go through. I don't care if you smell like toast. I still I smell like toast sometimes. I'm still having a great time. I'm still having the best years of my life. I'm still doing Jesus. I'm still doing my daughter. I'm still doing my mom. I'm still doing people in I'm still traveling. I'm still going to places. It took me, I got here. What time did we get here last night? Midnight. Midnight. By the time I went to bed, it was 1.30 in the morning. You know, what time, you know how long I sat in the airport? I sat in the airport for eight hours. 
waiting for a super plane. I said, Lord, where's my jet? He said, Delta. United. You know what's the funny thing? That I was waiting for my last plane, and I was exhausted. I had some, I had some Burger King. You know Burger King is not a real chicken sandwich. It's like a cat. A girl cat. I had with some fries, and I'm tired. I'm falling asleep. You know what? Sitting in your butt in the airport for like eight hours, you know, and then waiting for two planes to get here. And then I, 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 I get to the last plane. That's why, listen, you got to be careful who, who, what you do around people. I went for the last plane, so the guy was supposed to take my ticket to get me in the plane. I said, my brother, you know, I waited eight hours in the airport, this, this whole thing, whatever. We started to talk. And I said, but you know what? I'm cool. I'm going to preach. God is good. And I was just rejoicing, talking to him. You know what he said to me? After I gave him the ticket, he said, I know who you are. I said, what do you mean? He said, you're John Ramirez. I know who you are. I see all your videos on YouTube. Maybe I would have bust out a cap on this guy. I said, you know, let me tell you something, little Asian guy. I, you know, the plane got jacked up. It might be your fault. And he, and he kind of witnessed what I'd be. Not too long, I was on a plane, and this girl was going to jump over me and give me a lap dance. And I told her, hold, chill. I told her, hold on, time out. Don't, don't, don't climb over me. Let me just get out of the way, and then you can just get on your seat. She said, okay. So we did it. She got, I didn't want her to, you know, make no body contact or whatever. So she, she came in. I had, uh, I had my, you know, air things to give in the plane. And she said to me, oh, where did you get those? I said, I had them from the plane before. She said, oh, my man, I, 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 was, like, I was going to watch a movie. And, uh, and I said, you can have them. She said, you're going to watch them? I said, no, nah, don't worry about it. I close my eyes and I just meditate. I said, hey, you can have them. She said, okay. So when we got down to the water airport, she tapped me on my shoulder. She said, thank you so much for the air things. John Ramirez, I read all your books. No, all I did, if she would have given me the lap dance, and I would have been like Rico Suave, you know, and that would have not looked good. <laughs> what I'm saying is, this is what I'm saying to you. You get saved today, you walk with God, ask God to give you godly character. See, because you can have gifts. You could be the most anointed, like this brother here could play the piano, I hate this guy. <laughs> I wanted to play the piano. You cast out demons. I play the piano. <laughs> and what I'm saying to you, you can have all the gifts. You with me? But if you don't have godly character, you never stay. Amen. Godly character is the fear of God in your life. That every time I come up here, I get nervous. Every time I go somewhere, I say, Lord, help me. I don't know what to say to these people. I don't know what, what you know who's coming. I don't, independ I don't do self-independency. I said, Lord, help me, because if you don't help me, we're all dead in the water. And, and this is what I do. You know why I do these things? Because David Walkerson taught me that if you lose the fear of God, you lose everything. Everybody in the Bible, everybody in the Bible, David, all these people had the fear of God. And the fear of God will get you to the finish line, because you won't compromise. You won't, you won't let the devil take advantage of you. Because you have the fear of God. I got women that call me, go to say to me, hey, I heard you in town. I, I can go and take, pick you, go by your hotel and uh, hang out with you and uh, get you coffee. Maybe before I was married. And they still do. But anyway, I said, you got to be stupid. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to let you come buy me coffee. First, I don't drink coffee. I hate coffee. So I don't do these. You're not going to track me, come to my hotel and, and play me. You're going to buy me something to eat or whatever. Just to, you know, come in the hotel and, and think, you know, get something going. No, you're not going to do that. I come too far. I give in too much. And my wife is hot. <laughs> Super hot. So I, I don't need. I got, a, I got a Bentley. I don't need a Volkswagen in my life. <laughs> Understand? I'm sharing this with you because the devil's gonna. When you listen, when you start to know who you are in Christ, and you start knowing your identity and your purpose and your destiny, you'll be tested. If you were homosexual, he'll bring a Ricky Martin. Cause Ricky Martin's good looking. <laughs> Ricky is super good looking, right? That's a sexy Puerto Rican, for real. He's Mark Anthony, scarecrow. <laughs> that brother belonged to Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and Jennifer Lopez. She ugly. She can't sing. 
maker does wonders. But the devil will tempt you with the thing that God delivered you from when you least suspect it. Be prayed up, be unmovable, be steadfast, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be renew your mind every day. Walk with him. Walk with him. Live with him. Finish with him. And have this one thing with him. I touch and agree with him. There's power in agreement. There's power in unity. And my hand and his clap together all the time. I got the rhythm of heaven in my life. I don't have my own rhythm. There's things that I've been offered that I said, no, I don't want it. Other people say, you're crazy. Why you don't take that? That thing is off the hook. God is not in it. I don't want it. People get, offer me big things. I don't want it. God is not in it. I just want what God has for me. Because when God has something for you, he will prepare you for it before he gives it to you. So it will make you. It won't break you. So people bring stuff to break you and separate you from God's will and purpose in your life. So we're going to pray. Right now, where we at? You ready? You ready? Let's do it. Where's my catchers? Hmm? You want to watch? I don't want you to still take my wallet, girl. Oh, where's my wallet anyway, just in case? No. We don't, we, you mind a circle? My inner circle, we got some we got some stuff for y'all coming up. Yeah, that's that's good too. That's good too. Our inner circle is gonna open up and, and there's some things that are gonna come down the line for inner circle people. And we're gonna teach people in the circle how to do deliverance. So when I'm in places you can come and help me do deliverance. I did the first training already. Right? You were there? We did some stuff, and I, what broke my heart, there was a woman in my inner circle that she's broken. She lost her 11-year-old boy, and she think the devil took him out. I said, no, it was just time to go with Jesus. You with me? You ready? Raise up your hands. You got your hands in your pocket? You got money for me? All we have to do is this. Listen, talk to the Lord right where you are, and as I come, I come and agree with you. Amen? You Esther, what's up? You my Esther. Don't forget. Okay? This is what we do. We come in agreement with the Holy Spirit. The touch and agree with the Holy Spirit. No hindering, delay, no blocking, no distraction. We come in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Devil, listen to me right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't look at me. I just, just talk to God. And I, I'm not worried about you closing your eyes, whatever. You do whatever you're comfortable with. I just want you to talk to the Lord. Lord, I'm struggling with this. Lord, these are my, my settings sin. These are my patterns and cycles, Lord. These are my generational curses. I don't want my generational curses. My daughter got a bachelor's degree in psychology. She graduated from one of the best colleges when I got a high school diploma because the curse was broken. And my, I threw the rock 150 feet. My daughter threw it 300 feet. My daughter's going to be preaching in stadiums one day. She doesn't know it, but I know God, God showed it to me. This is what I'm talking to you about. Understand? I'm talking about your purpose and your destiny. I'm talking about fulfillment. I'm talking about clarity in your spirit, revelation in your heart, who you are. There's no surviving Christian. There's no mediocre Christianity. Lord, I want to be an arrow in your quiver. I want to be an arrow in your quiver in the name of Jesus. I want to be an arrow in your quiver. I got purpose. I got destiny. I got a plan. I got a purpose. I'm going somewhere. I'm starting somewhere. I got a middle and I got an end. And when I open my eyes, I'll be in heaven making Jesus Christ proud. He picked me. Ain't no devil, no witchcraft. No devil, no witchcraft, no demonic sin, no demonic stronghold, bondage of every kind will be able to stop me from what God has for me. No witch will be able to curse me, no devil, no sickness, no poverty, no poverty devil. Now in the name of Jesus, now in the name of every infirmity devil, every besetting sin devil, every tormenting devil, a suicide, oppression, depression. If you've been molested, you've been raped, it's time to give it up. If you need to forgive people, give it up now. Now, it's not this. You can't take that corpse where God is taking you. 
You can't take that corpse where God is taking you in the name of Jesus. Right now, I release the fire of the Holy Spirit upon every wicked devil. I shut the doors down in Jesus' name, in the Spirit, and I ask every devil to manifest now. Every devil to manifest now in the name of Jesus. Every struggling devil, you're struggling with something, whatever you're struggling, any addiction, every demonic thing that you call normal, that is not, God is not happy, God is not pleased, and God doesn't make peace with unrighteousness and impurities. God doesn't make peace. That's why I let it go. Holy Spirit is here. Holy Spirit is here. I don't have to touch people. Holy Spirit is here. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Every tormenting devil, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now. Right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, every tormenting devil, in the name of Jesus, right now. I have to release you now. I have to release you now, in the name of Jesus, right now. Fire in the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now, right where you are. Right where you are in the name of Jesus right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every tormented devil, every devil that's plaguing your mind. If you can't beat the devil in your mind, you can't beat him in the battlefield. Understand? If you can't beat him in your mind, if he has you convinced, if he has you thinking negative thoughts all the time, every day, and he has you thinking less of you, the devil is a liar. How could you think big of other, someone else? How could you talk about other people getting blessed and then when it comes to you, you don't think much of you? The devil is a liar. I think very highly of myself because God is with me. Who could be against me? If God has blessed me, who could curse me? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm a nobody, but I'm a somebody in him. That's the way it works. I don't care what you say about me. If I've been with Jesus, who are you? That's the way I roll. Because I'm, 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 I'm not a people pleaser. I'm a Jesus pleaser. That's how I do it. So right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus, that's right, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now, right now, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, right now, right now, every tormenting devil, every devil, suicide, oppression, depression, every medication devil, manifest now, manifest now, in the name of Jesus, right now, manifest now, manifest now, in the name of Jesus Christ, now, now, now. Now, I put the judgment of God upon every devil. I confuse their languages right now. Father, we bind every devil. We bind the straw man over this house. We shut down the door spiritually and no demon be able to escape. Right now, every tormenting devil, every devil of oppression, depression. Right now, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now. Devil, you have to loose you now. I'm looking to see on your spirit. You belong to Jesus Christ. Right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. That's right, devil. You ain't going nowhere. I got you. You ain't going nowhere. I have you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, right now. Loose you now, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now. Right now. That's right. Got to go. You can't stay. You can't stay. You can't be a squatter. I destroy legal rights in this house. I destroy legal rights, every demonic legal right. I burn it down to ashes in the name of Jesus right now. Holy Spirit right now. I put the arsenals of God. I put the judgment of God upon every devil in the name of Jesus right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus right now. Right now. Holy Spirit, have your ways. Release right now in the name of Jesus. Anybody behind her? Right now, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, right now, touch. In the name of Jesus, raise up your hands, my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now, right now, right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, Holy Spirit, touch my sister from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I break the spirit of rejection off you, my sister, right now. I break. Okay. Well, are you in the right place then? Right now. Right now. Father God, have your ways in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your ways upon my sister right now. Every rejection devil, I break it off you in the name of Jesus Christ. When you were little, you've been touched in the wrong places, my sister. 
when you were little. I break that off you in the name of Jesus Christ. I break it off you in the name of Jesus Christ. I break it off you in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, we renounce every stronghold, every bondage, every demonic attack over your life in the name of Jesus, every witchcraft devil over your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I break every witchcraft devil in the name of Jesus Christ over you. Devil, you got to go. Right now, my sister loves Jesus Christ too much. I break every demonic stronghold over your life in the name of Jesus. Every rejection, every rape devil in the name of Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in the name of Jesus, every stronghold, every demonic sin, every temptation of hell break off you today. Every drug addiction, every cocaine addiction now in the name of Jesus. Look at the seal on her spirit. She belongs to Jesus Christ. Father, she's the woman at the well. She's the woman at the well. She's a Samaritan woman at the well right now in the name of Jesus. Every hurt, every pain, every betrayal today in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now. Right now, Holy Spirit, have your ways. Every rejection, devil, from your daddy and your mommy. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, Holy Spirit, have your ways. Right now. Right now. Right now, Lord. Touch my sister. Every place that you got voice, you have emptiness. Right now. Right now, Lord. Right now. Right now. Right now, Holy Spirit, have your ways. Right now. Surrender all and have it all in Jesus now. Surrender all and have it all in Jesus now. Right now. Receive what God has for you. Amen. Let me, my sister, let me pray for you. Which you're, 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 you're like, hang out? She's, we work together as a group of friends, yeah. What do you work? What do you do? I own a massage, two massage um, spots. Freaky Freddy massages? Or what kind of massages <laughs> you got going? Because y'all look like Freaky Freddy to me. <laughs> what you got going? Uh, like, deep tissue type, Himalayan. What the heck is that? Himalayan salt rock. The what again? Himalayan salt rock. Okay, so what do you do? Like, massages, you make people new? Okay. I actually have a healing gift. You have a healing gift? Heal people. Heal people. Heal people. Yeah, new age or Christianity? Which no, one? God. The oh. Holy Spirit is in me. I heal people. I pray for people. You pray for people. Okay. What about you? I've saved 15 souls for Jesus. Uh, well, Jesus Ooh. used you to save 15 souls. Huh? Jesus used you to save 15 souls. Yeah, of course. He deserves all right. the glory. Right. Right. Amen. So I want you to, let's keep it that way. Let me pray for you, my sister. And, and you work with her? You work together? You're like the Batman and Robin? in the name of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus right now Holy Spirit breathe upon my sister from the top of her head to the sole of her feet anybody behind her now in the name of Jesus receive what God has Amen. let me give you a fresh anointing from the Lord so when you continue to pray for people the people will be healed People be healed. People be saved. Demons are run. Right now, Holy Spirit. Right now. Right now. Right now, Holy Spirit. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. Let me break that. Two days ago, I Let's break it. Ready? Yeah. Father, I just break right now every demonic attack over my sister's marriage, her family, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, she will have the last life, Lord, because you'll fight her battles and you will set her free, Lord, and give her husband a dream and a vision of hell and bring her back to his rightful mind. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As I come, as I come, raise up your hands. Right now, Holy Spirit, right now, in the name of Jesus, bring healing upon you right now, in the name of Jesus Christ.
bring healing upon you right now. Curse it to the root. Every sickness, let it be cursed to the root in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Holy Spirit, touch my brother from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Right now, fresh anointing, fresh fire. Right now, Lord, let it run through his body in the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus right now, heavy 